join our telegram channel and discord server for faster notifications update about videos and courses and discussions here you will also be able to talk to me and suggest me in planning my next course i will keep posting polls about hot and trending topics to learn scan the qr code to join easily on telegram also do not forget to check out our official website codeblockdev.com and our linkedin page you will get a lot of resources there too all of the links are mentioned in the description so let's now write our very first line of javascript code and for now we will do that in browser developer tools just to get started as quickly as possible we will then switch to the code editor to write javascript code efficiently and i will show you the setup of code editor in a moment for now we will use browser developer tool so i'm here on chrome browser so make sure to open up google chrome now if you want to use another web browser such as mozilla firefox feel free to do that as most of the instructions are going to be same for those browsers as well your learning will not be compromised at all now there are three ways in which we can open up the chrome developer tools first we can open it by hitting the shortcut command now that shortcut command is command option j this shortcut is for mac so on windows this is going to be control alt j and so this will then open up this console that we see here so all of these tabs are nothing but basically the developer tools but we are just interested in this console okay now another way of opening the developer tools is by first of all let me close this is by right clicking and then clicking inspect which will then bring us to this elements tab and from here just navigate to this console and another way of opening it is by and i am showing you all of this because different people like to do it in different ways so it is always better to know multiple ways so the third one is by going into this top menu bar click view go to developer and then from here click javascript console you can notice the first shortcut that i told you so it's probably command this is alt command j or i don't know what is this shortcut in mac this is option okay so option command j if you click this here you can see we are on console now this javascript developer console allows us to write and test javascript code so it's very useful during development for example to fix errors now we don't write real applications of course using this console for that we are going to use a code editor with setup i will show you in a moment but now just to get started let's use the console because it's a good way and a easy way to just write some javascript here so let's write here something so the first thing that we are going to write is going to be alert so alert is just a simple so called javascript function that alerts something on the browser now you don't have to understand all of this thing right now i'm going to teach you everything in great details we are just testing something so it is better to follow what i am telling you now after writing alert you can open up a parenthesis now inside this well not inside this but after this you can write a text message which is called a string so you can write it under this double quote now over here you can write hello world so hello world now this is nothing but a very standard way of learning programming in any programming language we start by writing a hello world program so if you have little experience in programming you can understand what i am saying nevertheless if you are a beginner you can still do it now close this with the same parenthesis 
if you hit enter or return on your keyboard now you can see that chrome new tab says hello world so this is nothing but just a way to print some pop-up over here or you can say just open some pop-up over here now this is also called a dialog box this entire box in javascript it's sometimes also referred as dialog box but again we are just starting out right so we are not going to put that much mind straight away just click ok to get out of here now we can also write something else here so let's do something else let's write a variable so here i'm going to write let java script equals to or let's just write js equals to another string awesome okay hit enter now we are going to test now you don't have to understand whatever i'm writing now we are just testing we are going to talk about all of this in great details so here i can say if let me increase the window size so that it will be clearly visible okay this much and let's bring some space space over here as well now here i can test if js equals to awesome we will simply say then alert js is awesome now let me explain you what i did so first of all we have declared a variable again i'm gonna teach you everything in detail but right now i'm just going to give you little explanation of what we did here so we are simply saying that if inside this parenthesis whatever we have written inside this parenthesis is true which is actually true we have declared this variable over here and we have said let js equals to awesome so we are simply saying hey javascript check if javascript is exactly equals to this string awesome and this statement will be evaluated to true and if it is true then alert javascript is awesome now if you hit return you can see our dialog box is actually returning us javascript is awesome okay and then just click ok to get out of it now over here we can say let js equals to no awesome okay and now let's copy this command here and first we need to hit enter and now here if we paste this if you now hit enter you see our dialog box is nowhere to be seen why because now this evaluation is false so if this is true then only alert this otherwise don't alert something now this might be going over your head but don't worry we are just getting started so you don't have to think much about this now another way in which you can write javascript code inside this developer console is that by going to source tab from here click this arrow and then from here click snippets and from here click new snippets and now name your file so i'm just going to write hello dot js now this dot js is extension this tells the browser that this file is a javascript file hit enter and now here you can write your javascript code so for example you can write alert hello world now how to execute this here in the corner you can see we have a shortcut which is command plus enter so either you can hit command plus enter or you can click here so if you click you see we get hello world and then inside the console we got some output which obviously we do not have to understand now another code that i want to show you here is to log something out in the console so this is nothing but also so this is also a function so for example if you want to print something inside the console uh, what about your name or your age or anything or simply you can go with hello world as well all you have to do is that you have to say console dot log hello world 
so this console.log is a function that prints whatever is inside this parenthesis down here in the console now let's run it again now you can see we get hello world similarly you can copy this let's close this part over here come to console and here you can write or let me show you how can you clear this console you can click this button or you can press command k to clear this console now let's paste that command here which is console.log hello world if you hit enter now you can see we get hello world similarly you can do mathematical calculations as well for example 12 plus 12 this is 24 12 into 12 144 so now you can see how fast is it to do some testing over here in the browser developer tools right so this is the reason why we use browser developer tools obviously we do not write real programs here now let's see how do we actually write real programs now from here i'm going to open a new tab and i will search vs code vs code is the code editor that we are going to use now click the first link and now from here click download and now you can download for your operating system windows linux mac i'm on mac so i'm not going to download for mac since i already have vs code installed now this is just a very straightforward setup process so it is not going to be very difficult for you to download vs code and and install it in your system for yourself okay now i already have installed vs code in my system now let me show you how we can actually write javascript code so i will navigate to my desktop and over here I'm going to create a new folder and I will simply name it 0 2 1 hit enter and now here is my VS code so all I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this folder drag it and drop it inside VS code and let it launch okay so now we are up now over here here you can see we have four icons now I will not bore you with all of this if you click this icon it will tell you to create a new file it will suggest you that by clicking this icon you can create a new file similarly you can create a new folder we are just going to create a new file and we will name it a script 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 dot js now this dot js is again the extension so this actually tells this code editor as well as the web browser that this file is a javascript file and it contains javascript code so please treat this file as a javascript file hit enter now here you can write all your code now what we did we wrote alert right so we can write alert and then here we are just going to write hello world now let's save this you can save this by pressing command s or by going to file and then from here clicking save if you save this here you can see the white icon is gone which means your file is saved now if you make any edit over here you can see we are seeing this white circle over here okay which means the file has been edited it needs to be saved before we get to see any update right so again we can again come over here to file save or simply we can just press this command which is command and s or in windows it would be control s to save this file so i can press command s and now the file is saved now how do we execute it so for this we are going to use index.html file so over here we are going to create one html document so i am going to call it index.html again this dot html tells the code editor as well as the web browser that this particular file is an html file so please render it as an html file and treat it as an html file hit enter and now here we can generate the default boilerplate of html now if you don't know html then it's completely fine i'm not going to teach you html right now we will be taking a look at the html 
little bit later obviously just in a moment i'm gonna not in a moment but just in a month or two i will be bringing a whole front end development course over here on the same channel okay now over here i'm going to print the default boilerplate now to print the default boilerplate of html just press shift and one on your keyboard which will again bring this exclamation now if you read it says emit every vsn so emit is just a shortcut that is already built in vs code and it helps us a lot in our coding it saves our time so again if you hit enter or if you click over here it will generate a default markup or default boilerplate of html now inside this you can write something you can write h1 we can say this is javascript javascript zero two one okay something like this now just save this again by pressing command s here you can see the file is not saved so command s now how do we open this we open this by opening the folder and then by double clicking over here so double click and i think it opened on my wrong browser so let me just get it with my so over here i'm going to get so here you can see javascript 0 to 1 okay so let me fix it very quickly okay drawn over here so now this is where our output is going to be shown but you can see that we are clearly not seeing what alert does alert simply prints a pop-up over here but we are not seeing this why now the reason why we are not seeing is that first of all let me close this one this sidebar you can close this by pressing this shortcut command v okay now we have to go to this index.html and we have to tell this index.html that hey index.html there's a file called script.js you need to load whatever it is written over here and then that will show up over here currently we are just rendering this is javascript 0 to 1 so we need to link this script.js over here how do we do that we are just going to say a script and press enter and then inside this script we can reference the script.js file using this source attribute we can say source equals to reference this script.js and now you will see the moment i will hit command s let me shrink it over here we need to refresh this right so refresh it and now you can see our dialog box over here okay so this pop-up says hello world now let me quickly adjust this so over here i'm going to adjust my window okay now over here let's close this one and we are going to do all of our work over here now again let's just print something to the console now i can say console dot log and over here i can say hello world now if i save this obviously we need a semicolon as well if i save this hmm if i reload we cannot see console why because console is not something that pops up over here console goes in browser developer console to see the output that console prints you'll have to again go to console so right click inspect go to console and now here you can see hello world okay so this is how we are going to write javascript code we will be writing javascript code over here in script.js and then we will see the output over here okay so now let's continue all right so we have written a few lines of javascript but what exactly is javascript and what can we do with it well that's exactly what we are going to find out in this video and so in this lecture we will set the stage for the rest of the course and so you must follow this one until the end you can find multiple definitions of javascript but if we summarize then an accurate definition would be that it's a high level object oriented multi paradigm programming language and now with that being said can we just move on well probably not because what does any of that actually mean so let's deconstruct this just a little bit to at least make some sense out of this and starting with the programming language itself a programming language is basically just a tool that allows us to write code that will instruct a computer 
टू डू समथिंग एंड ऑफ कोर्स दैट्स आवर मेन गोल ऑफ यूजिंग जाबा स्क्रिप्ट राइट देन वी गो ऑन एंड डिफाइन इट फर्दर बाई सेंग डेट जाबा स्क्रिप्ट इज अ हाई लेवल लैंग्वेज विच मीन्स डैट वी डोंट हैव टू थिंक अबाउट अ लॉट ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स स्टेप्स सच एज मैनेजिंग द कंप्यूटर्स मेमोरी वाइल इट रन आवर प्रोग्राम्स सो इन जाबा स्क्रिप्ट देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ सो कॉल्ड एब्सट्रैक्शंस ओवर ऑल दिज स्मॉल डिटेल्स डेट वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू वरी अबाउट एंड दिस मेक्स द लैंग्वेज अ लॉट ईजियर टू राइट एंड लर्न नेक्स्ट आई से डैट जाबा स्क्रिप्ट इज ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड एंड ऑल दैट मीन्स इज डैट द लैंग्वेज इज मोस्टली बेस्ड ऑन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स फॉर स्टोरिंग मोस्ट काइंड ऑफ डेटा एंड ऑफ कोर्स वी विल लर्न ऑल अबाउट ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग एज वेल शॉर्टली फाइनली जाबा स्क्रिप्ट इज ऑल्सो अ मल्टी पाराडाइम लैंग्वेज मीनिंग डैट इट्स सो फ्लेक्सीबल एंड वर्सटाइल डैट वी कैन यूज ऑल काइंड ऑफ डिफरेंट प्रोग्रामिंग स्टाइल्स सच एज इम्पेरेटिव एंड डिक्लेरेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग and these different styles are just different ways of writing and structuring our code basically again you will learn all about this throughout the course this is just a first very high level overview but i hope it's been making sense so far anyway now that we know what java script actually is or at least kind of what is the role that it plays in web development or in other words what do we actually use it for and to answer that question let's actually look at three core technologies of the web html css and of course java script so these three technologies all work together to create beautiful interactive and dynamic websites or web applications now the html is responsible for the content of the page so the text the images the buttons and all the contents that you see on the web page is always written in html then the css is responsible for the presentation of that content so basically for styling and for laying out the elements on a web page and then finally java script is the real programming language of the internet and it allows developers to add dynamic and interactive effects to any web page we also use it to manipulate the content or the css load data from remote servers and really build entire applications in the browser which we then call web applications now we can also use the analogy of nouns adjectives and verbs to make this separation of roles a bit easier to understand so in this analogy HTML represents the nouns for example saying that the p element is a paragraph and so paragraph is the noun here the css then is the adjective because it describes the noun like this piece of css saying the paragraph text is blue and so here blue is the adjective describing the noun and finally java script is of course the verb like saying hide the paragraph and so here we are doing something and so we have a verb okay i hope this analogy clearly explains the difference between the three core technologies that are the core part of web development now to finish this lecture i want to briefly talk about java script releases or versions as you might call them we will come back to this topic by the end of the section because it's super important to understand and i have also promised you that i will make you confident in java script still it's a good idea to get a first overview of java script releases at this point anyway to make a long story short there has been a huge update to the language in 2015 which is officially called es 2015 but most people just call it es6 simply because it was released after es5 and by the way es stands for ecma script now after es 2015 there is now a yearly new release with a couple of new java script features all of these new releases or versions starting from es 
are what we call modern JavaScript. But why am I telling you all this? Well, it's simply because in this course, I am going to teach you modern JavaScript right from the beginning. And don't worry, it is not going to be too complex to learn, that's my promise. Also, I wanted to make this very clear right from the start. However, I am also convinced that you need to understand what came before 2015, so ES5. And so I will also show you what's important about ES5. Now lastly, I just want to ask you for your support. Please like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Your one click will be a huge support to the channel and will keep me motivated to produce such high quality content for absolutely free. Now I can guess I might be boring you with these presentations, but trust me, these are essentials for you to understand to make a good start. As you might have heard, well begun is half done. Now I don't want to bore you with these slides anymore, so let's finally start writing JavaScript code. Welcome back. Let's now start to learn the JavaScript language, starting with values and variables and their data types. Now, first we are going to get a detailed look at what variables are and what are values and then we will understand what are data types. Ok, so to explain to you the concept of variables, I am going to take the example of a person such as a person's name, a person's age, a person's job and also their birth year. Ok, so now let's talk about what are values and if you feel like taking notes, then you should definitely, but be to the point and don't write everything in your notebook, just write down the essentials. So what is a value? So a value is a piece of data that contains raw information. In another word, you can summarize a value by considering it the most fundamental unit that we have in programming. For example, the text John here is a value and again if you want to see this in the console you can do this so you can say console dot log and you can wrap this value inside a parenthesis so if you save this come over here and if you reload the browser you can see we get the output John down here in the console and now in the right side of our value you can see it says script.js colon 1. So what it means is that the value or the output that we are getting in the console is the result of the execution of the line which is at this point. So script.js line 1. So come over here and see we have script.js and on the line 1 we have written console.log and hence this indicates that this output is from the execution of the code of the line 1. Now we can also have different values. So here we can say console.log and then inside this we can write a number. If I save this, if I reload my browser, you can see we get 30 and this time script.js colon 2. Now the extremely important thing that we can do with values is we can store them in a variable so that we can use them over and over again. For example, we can say let and then the name of the variable. So I can say first name and then by using an equal sign, we can assign it a value. So here I can say John. So what we did here is called declaring a variable. We declared a variable whose name is first name and then we assigned it a value which is John. So what it will do is this will create a real variable in your computer's memory and we will store this value inside of that variable. So you can imagine a variable like being a box. So in the real world a box can hold some object. For example it can hold a book, a t-shirt, a toy, simply some kind of object. And so then we can write a label on that box to describe what's in it. And then we can find the object later when we need it by using the label. And variables work in an exact way. So here 
we have a box called first name and into that box we put the value of john and now if you want to use this value all you have to do is to use this label in other words this variable name so you can do console dot log and then you can pass this variable name into this function and now you can use the value that is assigned to this variable if you save the script.js file if you refresh our browser you can see from line 5 we get the output john now we can use these variables many times so if i repeat this line three or four times and by the way i have used the shortcut shift option down arrow in mac and shift alt down arrow in windows now if i save this reload my browser you can see we are getting the output of john multiple times so now that we know what a variable is let's quickly talk about the conventions and rules for naming variables because we should not just give random names to variables so the first way i named this variable is called a camel case camel case means whenever we have multiple words in a variable name we start the variable name with lower case and then every following word starts with an upper case so first name so first started with the lower case and then after the first ended we wrote name and we capitalized the first word of name so this is kind of a standard in the javascript world but of course there are other ways of naming variables for example we can write a variable like this we can say let first underscore name and then we can assign it a value so again i can call it john so this is popular in other languages like python and ruby and you can use whatever way you like the most just keep in mind that it's kind of a standard in javascript to write the variable names like this so whenever you see other people's code usually you will see variables declared using camel case notation so that's kind of convention on how to name variables in javascript now there are also some hard rules in javascript about how we can name variables so for example you cannot write something like this so let me get some space you cannot say let for rupee equals to for rupee simply we are assign assigning it a simply we are assigning it a value of 4 you cannot start a variable name with the integer or number itself so you can read the error it says variable declaration not allowed at this location why because an identifier or keyword cannot immediately followed a numerical literal okay so this is numerical literal so this is not allowed in javascript also you cannot do something like this so you can say let me and my friend equals to john and week this is not allowed another error might occur when you try to use a variable name with a reserved javascript keyword for example you can say let new equals to shoes this is not allowed why because new is a reserved keyword and we are going to talk about new little bit later similarly you can also not use something like this you can say function equals to my function this cannot be done because function is a reserved word in javascript also another word that is kind of reserved but is allowed to use is name so we can say let name equals to john but i prefer to use it this way don't simply declare a variable called name always be specific for example first name you can also say last name okay so don't just use name although it is allowed but it is not recommended also do not start your variable name with a capital word so something like this let person equals to code this is not allowed okay i mean this is not illegal but this is a convention in javascript which we will talk about later by the way 
this is related to object oriented programming and constructor so we will see this later on the same note variables that are all in upper case are reserved for constants that we know will never change for example pi so we can declare them using this way so we can say let pi equals to the value of pi which is never going to change so we can say 3.1415962 something like this but don't use this convention for declaring all the common variables like first name or last name so don't do this let first name equals to anything let last name equals to anything don't do this okay now now to finally finish this lecture let's talk about one final convention which is to make sure that our variable names are descriptive and that's very important to write cleaner code so when you name your variable it should be easy to understand what exactly the variable is holding just by reading the name of the variable so we can write a descriptive variable name like this so we can say let my first job equals to and i need to get rid of all of these bad code over here otherwise we will run into error okay so let's delete all of this and let's get rid of this as well okay now we can say let my first job equals to software engineer and then if we switched our job we can say let my second job equals to i can say teacher okay so you can see that these variable names are descriptive we are actually saying that hey my first job was software engineer my second job is teacher rather than if we would have said something like this let job 1 equals to software engineer let job 2 equals to teacher if you compare both of them what do you think is looking more descriptive obviously this one because job 1 and job 2 does not make any sense we kind of do not relate that much but here it is completely descriptive it says my first job my second job okay so this is how we makes variable name descriptive next up we are going to talk about data types we talked about values and variables now in every programming language values can have different types depending on the type of data that we want them to hold and we already saw strings and numbers but there are actually more data types so let's now take a look at all the types that we have in javascript and first of all in javascript every value is either an object which looks something like this or a primitive value so a value is only a primitive when it's not an object and we will learn all about objects later but for now let's really focus on primitive data types so there are seven primitive data types number string boolean undefined null symbol and big int so let's look at them one by one first we have the number data type and numbers are always so called floating point numbers which means that they always have decimals even if we don't see them or don't define them for example the value 30 that we have here is exactly like having 30.0 but they are both simply the number data type in many other programming languages you will find different data types for integers and for decimals java is one good example but not in javascript in javascript all numbers are simply of the type number okay and don't confuse yourself by java and javascript both are different programming language next up we have strings which are simply a sequence of characters and so they are just used for text as we already learned and always put them in quotes no matter if double quotes or single quotes otherwise javascript will actually confuse them with variable names 
द बुलियन डेटा टाइप इज इसेंशियली अ लॉजिकल टाइप डेट कैन ओनली टेक वन ऑफ द लॉजिकल वैल्यूज ट्रू और फॉल्स इन अदर वर्ड्स अ बुलियन इज ऑलवेज इधर ट्रू और फॉल्स वी यूज बुलियन वैल्यूज टू टेक डिसीजन्स विथ कोड एज वी विल सी लेटर एंड दीज आर द थ्री मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट डेटा टाइप्स डेट वी विल डील विथ द मोस्ट बट देर आर स्टिल फोर मोर विच माइट बी अ बिट मोर कन्फ्यूजिंग सो फर्स्ट अनडिफाइंड इज द वैल्यू टेकन बाय अ वेरिएबल दैट इज नॉट येट डिफाइंड एंड द वेरिएबल दैट्स नॉट येट डिफाइंड इज सिंपली जस्ट अ वेरिएबल दैट वी डिक्लेयर्ड बट विदाउट असाइनिंग अ वैल्यू फॉर एग्जाम्पल लाइक दिस गेम प्लेयर वेरिएबल हेयर सो बेसिकली वी कैन से डैट अनडिफाइंड मीन्स एम्प्टी वैल्यू देन देर इज ऑल्सो नल विच इज एक्चुअली प्रिटी सिमिलर बिकॉज इट ऑल्सो मीन्स एम्प्टी वैल्यू बट इट्स यूज इन डिफरेंट सरकमस्टेंसेज बट फॉर नाउ डोंट वरी अबाउट द डिटेल्स आई जस्ट वॉन्ट यू टू नो डैट नल ऑल्सो एग्जिस्ट ओके एनी वे नेक्स्ट वी हैव सिम्बॉल विच वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन ई एस ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन एंड दिस डेटा टाइप इज नॉट रियली यूजफुल फॉर अस इट्स सिंपली डिफाइंस अ वैल्यू दैट इज यूनिक एंड कैन नॉट बी चेंज Finally starting in ES 2020 there is also big int also called as big integer which is for integers that are too large to be represented by the number type so basically it's another type for numbers and we will talk about this one a little bit later so these are the seven primitive data types in javascript but there is another fundamental thing to know about types which is the fact that javascript has a feature called dynamic typing this means that when you create a new variable you do not have to manually define the data type of the value that it contains in many other programming language you actually have to do that but not in javascript instead javascript automatically determines the data type of a value when it's stored into a variable and this distinction between value and variable is pretty important because in javascript it's the value that has a type not the variable so variables simply store values that have a type many people don't know about this detail or just don't care but this is how it actually works now another important application of dynamic typing is that later in our code we assign a new value with a different data type to the same variable without a problem for example a variable named x can initially be a number and later a string that's not a problem at all and this can of course be very useful but it can also be the source of some difficulty to find bugs which means errors in our code okay so let's now see all of this in code to get a clear understanding Before we talk about data type let's quickly talk about code commenting so in programming we use comments to literally comment code or to deactivate code without deleting it so for example here you can see we have few lines of code okay and if we want to log it out in the console we can do something like this so we can say console dot log and then here we can reference this my first job let's quickly reference my second job as well so that we can get both the value out here in the console save this if i reload we get both the value software engineer and teacher down here in console now what we can do is that we can comment some parts of the code but without deleting it so comments are used in many ways for example you can use comments to actually tell about a part of code block that what it is doing for example here you can say that we have declared two variables right and above here you can also say that we have declared our first name variable so this is a very general example but i hope what i am telling you is making sense to you so what we can actually do is that we can come over here and write down a comment now how do we write a comment by simply writing two forward slashes and now after this you can write the comment and one thing good about comment is that when you write a comment javascript engine does not pass that line 
for example here if you declare a variable let I can say random equals to 20 and now if you console.log random we will get a reference error if I save this refresh you can see we are getting a reference error it says random is not defined why because this is simply a comment and comment is not executed by the script so always remember we use comment to actually comment down some parts of the code but again we can use comments in many ways as well we can actually say that uh, here is our important well let's fix the spelling important variables okay for example if we declare a function over here if I say function just for an example I can say say my name so here I can write a comment and I can say here we have defined a function okay so it would make sense so if someone who would be taking over our project they can actually understand that okay so here we have defined a function and then they can further add their logic to it and then they can write down their own comment as well so they can say I have made certain changes here okay so when you will take on your project back you can actually realize that okay so these are the changes that has been made okay so this is how comments are useful now we can use multi-line comments as well so we don't have to do something like this we don't have to press forward slash again and again okay what we can do is that we can use a multi-line comments so multi-line comments starts from slash a strict and ends where you want to end the comment a strict slash so between these whatever code we have will be commented so this will not be executed by the javascript engine okay so this is multi-line comment and this is single line comment now there's a shortcut in vs code if i get rid of this now if i press command and forward slash it automatically creates our it automatically converts our code into a comment or our line into a comment so for mac the shortcut would be command forward slash and for windows it would be control forward slash all right so this is comments but now let's get back to the topic of the lecture which is data types so in the previous video we saw numbers and strings now we already talked about booleans so booleans is a value that can be either true or false okay so over here let me just get rid of these lines okay and i'm starting fresh now if i write true here then this already is a boolean okay if I save this and if I reload my browser you can see well you cannot literally see but in order to see it in the console we need to log it okay so I can say console dot log and now if I reload the browser you can see true over here okay so this is a boolean now before we further talk about data types let me tell you about one very important operator which is called type of operator so type of is an operator just like the plus or the minus operator now at this point we have not talked about operators but don't worry we are shortly going to cover that as for now just know that we can use type of operator to show the type of a value so let me show you how it works now I said that this is boolean you can see this is true now you can ask me that how can I say that this is a boolean this could be a string as well but no this is a boolean and to prove it we can use type of operator so here I can say type of space this one so if I save this now if I refresh you can see it says boolean similarly you can check for numbers as well so you can say 20 and let's do for a string as well so I can say code block okay and let me do a floating point number as well you will see that they are also called as a number as we discussed earlier already so if I save this if I reload you can see script.js line 25 is a boolean line 26 is a number line 27 is a string and line 28 is a 
number okay so by using type of operator we can actually figure out what exactly is the type of the value now moving on let's see dynamic typing in action so remember dynamic typing simply means that we can easily change the type of a value that is hold by a variable now this might sound little overhyped but this is as simple as this so we already have a variable so over here if you scroll it here you can see we already have a variable which is called as first name okay now let's again reassign a value to it and i'm just going to get rid of all of these console.log for now okay now to reassign the value we can again say first and let's quickly get rid of this variable as well okay just keep it simple i can say first name equals to now i can say jack jack sparrow well it's captain jack sparrow so captain jack sparrow okay now you will see that the first name will change to captain jack sparrow now let me prove it console.log first name if i save this right now here you can see it is john okay now if i reload the browser now you can see it is captain jack sparrow from line 7 script.js line 7 is now captain jack sparrow first we initially assigned it a value of john and then we changed the value we changed the value dynamically now one thing that i want to clearly mention here is that we don't use this let keyword again we just reference the variable name and then reassign it a new value if you write let here again it means that we are again creating or again declaring a new variable which is illegal right now because both of the variable name has same name if you say two it's fine but since we already have first name variable we cannot create a variable with the same name twice so this let does not make any sense here why because we are just changing the value of a variable dynamically okay now we can again change the value from a string right now this is a string so we can change the value from a string to a number as well for example first name does not make sense but we can actually write a number here or let's do it in a separate variable i can say let age equals to 29 okay 29 console.log age if i reload you can see 29 right let me quickly comment down all of these as well okay now if i reload you can see we see 29 and this is a string by the way so if i use type of operator again you will see this is a string right but now if we change the age to uh, number 30 now if i save reload now it turned number so this is how dynamic typing works in javascript we can again and again reassign different values to a same variable as long as we have declared all of the variables legally what do i mean by legally is that we have not declared the same named variable twice so first name is declared only once and anywhere you can change the variables value to a different value and now let's see an example of undefined so i told you number strings and booleans are the most used data types but there are more undefined and null and we have symbol and begin as well but in this video we are just going to talk about the three important one that we use quite often so now let's see undefined and null so remember that undefined is the value taken by a variable that is not yet defined so basically undefined means an empty value so it's perfectly legal in javascript to do this we can say let age and that's it well not that's it because we already have age variable defined so let's change the variable name to something else so i can say my name and this is completely legal in javascript okay so we have defined a variable but without a value and then if we take a look in the console that what this variable holds as a value we can say console.log and reference my name here save this when i will refresh the browser you will see undefined there so if i 
reload you can see it says undefined so what it means is that when we declare an empty variable the value of the variable will be undefined and the type of the variable will also be undefined so let me quickly prove it so if i say type of my name reload the browser you can see it says undefined now this maybe sounds a bit confusing but it's really not so simply put undefined is both the value and the type of the value okay so if you again do something like this let's remove this one save this you can actually see the difference so first is the undefined it says the type of the variable which is undefined why because simply we have not defined any value to it we have created a variable but there is no value that's why it is undefined and that's why the type of the variable is undefined and undefined is different than other types in this way but this detail is not really important what matters is that when you declare an empty variable like this it will automatically hold the value of undefined and that's why we get undefined here then just like before we can again reassign a value to this variable so i can say my name equals to john and now if i save you will see that the type of operator will say my name is holding a value string and console.log will actually console the output that my name variable is storing so if i reload the browser string john i hope it is pretty clear to you again if you want to change the value you can say my name equals to uh, whatever let's just go with true again it does not make sense to hold a boolean value in a my name variable because my name is a very descriptive variable if a variable name is my name we can expect that we are storing our name in that variable but here i am storing a boolean just to show you okay there is no problem at all we can do some experiments right away so if i now reload the browser you can see it says boolean and the actual value is true okay and now finally just to quickly finish i want to show you an error that exists in the type of operator so all i am going to do here is to quickly say console.log type of null so remember that null is just another data type and it's similar to undefined and it's also similar in the fact that both the value and the type of the value are null okay now about this bug javascript says that a type of null is an object and this doesn't make any sense at all and so this is regarded as a bug or an error in javascript however this bug is never corrected for legacy regions but now it's of course not an object this should return null just as type of undefined returns undefined so just keep that in mind when working with type of now we will also come back to this later in the course to make sure that you don't create any accidental bugs because of this weird behavior okay and now that's all i had to tell you about data types in javascript so now let's actually talk about how we can declare variables in javascript three ways now we are going to understand the three ways of declaring a variable so far we have just used the let keyword to declare variables but there are two more const and where now let and const were introduced in es6 so they are modern javascript while the where keyword is the old way of declaring variables so remember i had promised you that i will teach you modern javascript right from the beginning but without skipping the old javascript concepts which are essential for us to know so let's learn how const let and where are different and which one to use in which situations now before i proceed i am requesting you to please like the video and subscribe to the channel it won't cost you any money but will be a huge help for me so yes please 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 consider subscribing and also you can comment your feedback about the video 
and if you need separate explanation on any concept okay so now let's proceed to understand what are the differences so over here you can see we have declared our variable using let keyword so what we can do is that let keyword is used to declare a variable that has a potentiality or we can say potential to be changed down in the future so we can say we can use let me write down a comment we can say we use let keyword to declare variables that can be that can be changed that can be changed in the future so i can say let let me show you one practical example that we already did so first over here where are you i think here you can see we have first declared a variable my name to john and then we changed my name to true which obviously does not make any sense and we already have talked about why but anyway you can see that we first declared the variable using let keyword we assigned it a value and then we changed it so we use let keyword to declare variables whose value can be changed in future let's take one more example we can say let age equals to 30 okay now age keeps changing every year right well it says age is already defined okay so over here let's comment out this one okay so let's comment this out let's comment this out okay so let age equals to 30 now next year i will be 31 and after 10 years i will be 40 so this age can be changed so now i can say age equals to 40 okay so this is completely doable so now i can say console.log age save this reload uh, okay it says reference error cannot access age before initialization where are you age equals to 30 console.log let's check script.js line 11 so it is always good to check from where the error is originating so you can see script.js line 11 so line 11 has some problem so line 11 okay so this code must have been commented okay so let's comment this out and now if i refresh you see we get 40 and let me take a time to let's comment this out as well okay let's comment this everything out save this refresh and now we get 40 okay so script.js line 41 40 so this is let keyword now on the other hand we use the const keyword to declare variables that are not supposed to change at any point in the future so the value in a const variable cannot be changed always remember const simply means constant and constant does not change remember mathematics class basic mathematics i hope you remember so const simply means constant for example i can say birth year so birth year does not change right if you are born in 1998 or 2010 it is not going to change right so how can we declare a variable using this way we can say const again the way we said let now we can say hey javascript const birth year equals to let's go with 2000 okay 2000 and remember i am using semicolon so this is completely optional if you want to emit this emit this if you want to provide a semicolon it's completely fine so we are saying javascript const birth year equals to 2000 now i can say console log, log, but save this refresh we get 2000 from script.js line 45 okay so what actually is happening here now i just told you that the value of const cannot be changed okay so now if we try to do something like this we can say birth year equals to 2010 if i save this if i refresh you can see we get type error it says assignment to constant variables so again remember i just mentioned you that you cannot change a value of const let's value can be changed but const value cannot be changed that's why it is called constant so let me write down the comments over here so that when i will provide you the final file you can actually check it okay so i can say const value does not change okay or i can say const value can not be updated and let's write down the let uh, as well you can say let's value can be 
changed in the future okay and so that's exactly what the const keyword does it creates a variable that we cannot reassign or in technical term an immutable variable and so a variable that cannot be mutated so mutated simply means changing the value in the future so let is mutable const is immutable okay so always remember mutating a value simply means we are changing the value of a variable in future and immutable simply means that the value is declared with such a keyword which is immutable so const is immutable let is mutable so i am really emphasizing on these points because these are very simple but yet very essential for you to understand okay i could have gone in a like a very uh, bullet approach talking about all of these things uh, very speedy but no i am just emphasizing because i know these can be very tough for a beginner okay now the fact that variables created with const are immutable also means that we cannot declare empty const variables for example this is not legal so we cannot say const my name so we cannot define an empty variable using const keyword and if you look at the warning it says const declarations must be initialized okay so if i save this if i reload the browser you can read it says missing initializer in const declaration at script.js colon 49 so at 49 this error is originated okay and so this error simply means that when using const we need basically an initial value so now we can say let's go with john john okay so this is completely fine but again you cannot do something like this okay this is possible using let keyword but for const this is not allowed okay so what will you get the error you will get missing initializer initializer in const declaration okay i hope it is making sense so far okay so just like here now with these two different types of declaring variables you will probably ask should i use let or should i use const to declare a new variable well as a best practice for writing clean code i always recommend to use const by default and let only when you are really sure that the variables needs to change at some point in the future for example when you have a variable that's really never supposed to change like this birth year over here you should always use const keyword and if you are sure that the age variable is never changing inside your program you should declare it using const as well so again you can say something like const age equals to 35 so just be sure that age is never going to change the reason for this is that it's a good practice to have as little variable mutations or variable changes as possible because changing variables introduces a potential to create bugs so basically errors in your code so again by default always just use const and let when you are sure that the values of the variables need to change at some point in your code okay so from now on i will probably use the const way of declaring variables as much as possible now there is also a third way in javascript to declare a variable which is the var keyword but this one should actually be completely avoided okay however we should still know how it works because remember i told you that in order to understand javascript there are some concepts which we must understand to understand the updated concept for example we are about to understand const and uh, let but you must also understand that how javascript used to behave before es6 so this was my promise and i am holding up on my promise okay and this is also one of the reasons why you should subscribe to this channel so thank you so much in advance now what we can do is that we can to declare a variable now we can use var keyword we can say var and now i can say uh my name equals to again let's comment this out so that we can use this variable name again okay so my name and now we can pr provide it one more name i can say captain jack a sparrow okay so this is completely fine so var is basically the old way of defining variables prior to es6 and at first sight 
this might look that it is pretty same as let so we can write where my name equals to a value so this is just like let you are right and we can change the value of the variable later as well so now we can say my name equals to john wick that's completely fine okay now although it looks like where and let are very similar below the surface they are actually pretty different and actually there are also many differences between let const and where so between all three of them and you will learn about all of these differences later but just because we are talking about these three things these three concepts actually i am going to tell you about these as well now this is very important stuff and i know that i keep saying that you will learn some topics later in the course but the truth is that learning is really not linear so right now it would really not be useful for you to know that let is block scoped and where is function scoped right because you don't even know what a block or what a function really is and so we will learn about all of these differences a little bit later but just to summarize this video i want to tell you that const are immutable const are immutable let can be mutated and i can say where can also be mutated but they are function scoped okay so this is difference between const let and where but we are going to talk about most of the advanced topics like scoping of how scope and scope chain works what is the actual difference between where and let little bit later in our playlist okay so i hope i made pretty much clear about what to use and what is actual difference between where const and let now we are going to talk about all of these practical steps little bit later down the line but for now these are the only things that you need to know and i will request you to keep practicing next up operators hey everyone so now we are going to talk about operators in javascript but before we write the code and try to understand what are operators i am going to explain to you what is the use of operators so in a very layman term we can say that operators are used to perform some operations now what are those operations well those operations can be mathematical operations assigning a value comparing a value and others so now let's understand operators in wild by writing few lines of code now before we start to write few lines of code let's assume that you want to calculate a birth year of a person who was born in 1960s so how how would you calculate the birth year of a person in 2022 very easy you can actually do it on your own but let me go straight forward so first we will declare a variable so probably we are going to use some mathematical calculations right so adding subtracting multiplications division okay so i would do first i would create a variable i will say let birth year and i will hold the value 1960 in it and here i am providing it a semicolon i can skip it as well since it is optional but i am providing it okay so we have declared a variable called birth year and we have assigned it a value of 1960 now again first let me write a comment here i will say calculate the age of a person born in 1960 so first we have declared this variable now to calculate the age of the person born in 1960 what we need to do we need to subtract the current year to this birth year from this birth year right so what we can say we can simply say console.log console.log the current year is 2022 so 2022 minus birth year okay so this code would actually be something like this so console.log 2022 minus 1960 and this would result into 62 i guess right so here i can refresh the page and now you can see we get 62 
from script.js 72 so from line line 72 we are getting 62 as the output now what just happened is that we used two operators first one is we used assignment operators and then we used mathematical operators also known as arithmetic operators now this is just a simple talk that i am giving to you now let's understand operators bit more differently okay so first i'm going to write the comment so there are three main operators that we are going to talk right in this video these are arithmetic operators and i'm writing this comment because when i will give you the final file you can actually go through the files and you can understand that okay so here we have studied about arithmetic operators and then after arithmetic operators we have comparison operators so i can say compare region or let's go with assignment first okay so assignment operators and then we have compare region compare region operators we have few more but we will not talk about them in this video i'm just going to keep it very easy okay so yeah so first arithmetic operators so these are actually mathematical operators that allow us to perform mathematical operations so plus minus uh, multiplication and then we have division okay and then we have power exponents okay and uh, actually you can see that this is a strict this is not multiplication so traditionally in mathematics we have this symbol symbol x as mathematic as a uh, multiple multiplication right but in programming we have a strict so this is called a strict so if you press the button uh, in macbook it is shift and Eight, okay so if you press the combination of shift and it it would print a streak and I hope that it is the same for Windows as well okay but nevertheless the focus should be to clear our concept right so this is plus minus multiplication division okay so let's actually do some steps okay so suppose that you have two numbers first let me comment this out otherwise it will create an error over here so suppose that we have two numbers and we want to perform some mathematical operations on it we can do that so i can say let number one equals to let number one is 30 let number two is 20 and now we can perform mathematical operations so we can do console dot log we can add these two numbers okay so we can say number one plus number two so now number one will be added to number two so 30 plus 20 would result into 50 being printed here okay so let's save the file uh, reload the browser you see 50 similarly we can perform subtraction as well so we can just say minus so now it would be 30 minus 20 so it would be 10 and then we can multiply these two as well so i can say asterisk so number one multiplied to number two 30 into 20 it would result into 600 and let's go with division as well so division is just this slash okay so save this reload the browser 50 10 600 and 1.5 so 30 divided by 20 is 1.5 and actually we can do that over here as well so we can simply say 30 divided by 20 and now you can see 1.5 you can do 20 plus 30 and this is 50 so this is arithmetic operator very easy to understand if you have gone to basic mathematics classes you can understand what am i talking about and you must have been to mathematic mathematics classes okay and next up we have assignment operator and it's pretty easy to understand what are assignment operators we have already done here so what we have done is that we have assigned value 30 to number one using this operator so this is assignment operator we have said that hey script.js assign this value 30 to this variable and the script that just simply said okay good i'm going to assign this value to this variable so this is assignment operator but we have more than this we have uh, let's, let's let's take an example okay otherwise it would not be very clear to you so uh how about if you say let x equals to 20 plus 5 what is happening here is that we are declaring a variable x and then we are assigning it a value using this equal operator this term so 20 plus 5 so the result of 20 plus 5 would be stored into this variable 
using this assignment operator which is called as equals operator okay so now if you say console.log x save this reload the browser you get 25 okay let me comment these codes out okay it's equals to 20 plus 5 console.log x resulted into 25 okay now other than this what we can do is that we can actually say that suppose that we want to increment the value of 25 to something else so now we can say uh, suppose that i want to increment the value by 10 how can we do that suppose i i'm giving you a task that currently the value is 25 but now you have to make it 35 what would you do you would simply say that x equals to x plus 10 right because currently x is 25 but now 25 plus 10 will be 35 so now if i save this if i reload now you can see our value is 35 right but there is a shorter way of doing this so the shorter way of doing this is simply saying let me comment this out i will say this is a longer way and a shorter way of doing is that simply saying x plus equals to 10 so this is same as saying x equals to x plus 10 if i save this reload you can see we again got 35 right and if you think that this 35 is not the different 35 so let me increase the value by 20 and now you will see 45 45 and similarly we can subtract as well so either we can say x equals to x minus 10 so again it would become 35 because currently x is 45 so 45 minus 10 is 35 but again this is the longer way right we can simply do x minus equals to 10 and now it would again come back to 35 reload the browser again it came back to 35 similarly we can multiply as well we can say x asterisk equals to 10 and now it would result into 350 being printed down here in the console reload 350 and similarly we can divide as well so we can say x divide equals to 10 and now it would be 35 okay so this is assignment operators we are assigning a value to uh, already available variable or maybe to create a new variable we can also use this okay now other than this suppose that you want to increment the value of 35 by 1 again you can do this this way so x equals to x plus 1 but similarly we have a very short code and that is to write x plus plus that's it so if you write x plus plus it would increment the current value of x by 1 if i save this reload now it became 36 similarly you can say x minus minus and now it would again come back to 36 36 but there is no x asterisk asterisk you cannot do that okay so always remember this so x plus plus simply let me write down the comment increment the current value by 1 and same decrement the so this is assignment operator and then we have comparison operator so comparison operator is very easy to understand suppose we want to compare two numbers so first i'm going to say let number one equals to 30 and then i will say let number two equals to 60 so we can compare these two numbers if number one is greater than number two or number two is greater than or equal to number three so something like this okay so we can simply say uh, console.log.log dot log num1 and we can use this greater than or less than or greater than equals to less than equals to symbols to compare the numbers okay so we can simply say console.log number1 greater than number2 now let's assume it ourselves so number1 is 30 and number2 is 60 so is number1 greater than number2 no so it would result into false being printed here okay so save this reload you see false okay so this is comparison operator similarly you can check for less than as well you can say less than and now it would print into true why because number one is 30 and number two is 60 and obviously number one is less than num2 reload now you get true okay similarly you can also do some other steps like for example if you want to check if a person is full age you can write a program for that okay so i can say let full age to enter the bar i know it is a long name but i'm just doing some examples okay so don't mind let full age to enter the bar is 18 so i can say console dot log is we can simply say full age is greater than 18 
and we have to declare a variable as well so I can say let full or we can simply say person age okay so suppose a person is entering the bar we are actually going to ask them if you are 18 or not so suppose that person is 17 so we can check console.log full age greater than 18 no it would result into false okay so if I save this reload a uh, uncaught reference error full age it not defined oh how can we use full age we can simply say person age so we can say person age greater than 18 save this reload and I'll just false no the person is only 17 so this way we can check if a person is full age or not and if I obviously say 19 now it would result into true being printed so you can see it says true so we can allow them to enter the bar okay so this is operator and these are the huge cases of operators now one more thing that I want to talk about is that there is a term called uh, operator precedence so what does the javascript language actually know that if it should do the maths first or the comparison first so that is what we are going to talk about right now okay now just in a moment we will talk about operators precedence so how does the javascript know if it should do the math first or the comparison first right but let me take a moment to talk about two important operations that I almost forget to explain and these are exponentiation operation and joining two strings together using the plus operator so let me show you both of them quickly so over here so we have already seen the plus minus sub subtraction multiplication right but we have not seen the exponentiation so if I go little above I guess I've already written that so here arithmetic operators plus minus multiplication division and then we have this exponentiation so double asterisk so let me show you how it works so we can simply say console.log and suppose we want to find out 2 to the power 3 right so we can actually say 2 asterisk asterisk 3 so this would result into something like this so 2 into 2 into 2 okay so 2 to the power 3 if I save this reload we get 8 okay and suppose if you want to find out the power of uh, little different number I can simply say 12 so 12 into 12 is 144 and 144 into 12 let's see what it says so it's 17 28 right so I can prove it so I can say 12 into 12 into 12 okay so 17 28 okay so this is exponentiation and here I can write it exponentiation operation okay and then after this I will say joining strings using the plus operator okay? so what does it mean it simply means that we can actually join two strings together using this plus operator so let's declare two strings I can use let and I can use const as well so let's go with const no problem because I have already explained you what are differences between let const and where okay so I can say const uh, first name equals to John yes John and const last name equals to week okay and I'm skipping the semicolon so I can say console.log console.log first name plus last name so what it would do is that it would simply concatenate first name and last name so here we will get the output John Wick so if I save this refresh we get John Wick obviously we have some spacing problems here but we can fix it by joining one more space in between them so we can just do this okay so first name plus we have a space and then plus last name so John would come here then a space and then week so now if I save this and reload we get John week okay but no we cannot do this one we cannot subtract this okay so if I save this and if I reload it says none not a number okay so yeah just concatenation would work completely fine and we will actually see more about these terms little bit later when we'll understand about strings okay and template literals but right now I just wanted to 
talk about these two terms because these are uh, this can be very useful at certain places okay so yeah now let's move forward and understand what does operator precedence means in javascript so now we are going to talk about precedence of operators in javascript so first i'm going to write few lines of code and i will tell you to pause the video and answer the output of the code and then i will answer it and will explain you why that happened and this way you will understand how the javascript actually knows how to operate when multiple operators are put to use so here is the code so now let's go through the code line by line so we have declared a current year and set it to a future value of 2025 so let's assume we are in future and then we are performing some operations here so we are simply saying console.log current year minus 1991 is greater than current year minus 2001 so now it is your time to pause the video and find out what would be the output here in the console so pause it now so i hope you were able to complete it. It's very easy. Let's evaluate it line by line and actually code by code. So what is the current year? 2025, right? So I can say 2025 minus 1991 and then greater than 2025 minus 2001. Let's 2001 and let's further calculate it. So 2025 minus 1991 so it would be 34 right greater than 24 so the output would be true because 34 is greater than 24 right so if i save this reload we get true obviously because current year minus 1991 is greater than current year minus 2001 and here is the explanation now how does javascript actually knows that these two operations these two operations needs to be calculated first rather than using this comparison operator first right so what i mean to say is that how javascript actually knows that we need to evaluate these first and then compare it well it works this way because javascript has a well-defined order of operator precedence so basically the order on which operators are executed and to actually see the precedence of all the different operators let's check out a very handy precedence table so let's google mdn mdn stands for mozilla Deve developer network and then here we can write operator precedence in js i hope the spelling of precedence is correct Okay, so we have some results and actually we are interested in this one, operator precedence. Click this and here you can see we get operator precedence and let's go a little down. We will find a table and we found the table actually. You can see it's a table. If you read it says the following table lists operators in order from the highest precedence to the lowest precedence so now let's evaluate it what is happening here so grouping has the highest precedence so these parentheses so the operations inside the parentheses will always be performed first so uh, you you might have heard of those board mass uh, board mass terms right so let me just make a search I can say board mass board mass what is board mass so yeah this is actually what this table is telling so board mass is an acronym and it stands for bracket order division multiplication addition and subtraction and if you read further it says in certain regions pem does okay so pem does i think it, it works in us but in uk and india it's board mass so now let's figure out what we are actually let's stick to the point of why this first evaluated than this here you can see that all the mathematical operations like addition subtraction division remainder has a higher precedence of 12 and 11 than these comparison operators so less than less than equal to greater than greater than equals to okay so it has 
operator operator precedence of nine, and then these arithmetic operators has operator precedence of high of eleven and twelve. Okay, so these operations will be performed first than this. Okay, so that's why this operation and this operation is performed first, and then both of them were compared using this comparison operator. Now you can also notice something written over here. So right to left, left to right. What are these? Well, these are associativity. So when operations are performed, some of them are executed from left to right, and some of them are executed from right to left. So from right to left. Now over here you can see that additions. and subtractions are executed from left to right and exponentiations are executed from right to left now what does this actually means so now let me explain you what this means so over here if i write console dot log i can say 30 minus 20 minus 2 what do you think will be the output so the output will be operated like this actually not operated but the output will be evaluated so here first 30 minus 20 will be evaluated so 30 minus 20 is 10 right and then 10 minus 2 okay so first these two code will be evaluated and then the result will be and then this 2 minus 2 will be subtracted from the result so this is left to right execution and if you if you see it says subtractions are executed from left to right okay if i save this i can prove it here if you reload you get 8 similarly we have exponentiations these are executed from right to left so something like this if you write let x1 equals to 2 asterisk asterisk 3 So what does this actually means is that for browser and not for the browser for JavaScript engine it is x1 equals to 2 asterisk 2 asterisk 2 right so first these two results will be evaluated so these two calculation so 2 into 2 would result into being 4 so I can write here 2 into 2 is 4 and then after this 4 will be multiplied. to this 2 okay so 2 so 4 into 2 would result into 8 right and we have already seen this so one is from left to right and one is from right to left so here i can write left to right operation and then here i can say right to left operations and trust me these are very important for you to no okay so that's why i am putting emphasis over it so actually let's just keep it to console dot log something like this x1 that's it and we will get the output anyway okay now yeah one more thing i want to show you is that if you navigate little down and i will show you the real use case so assignment is actually right to left right so right to left now how does this actually works okay again we are talking about assignment this is going to be a little bit confusing but trust me i'll i'll try my best to make it very easy for you to understand okay so now let's declare first of all let's reload it so we can let's let's get rid of the output otherwise it will disturb us in the console so comment this out reload crystal clear okay so over here i can say let n1 comma n2 so we have declared two variable on the same line and it's completely fine we don't need to declare variables all the time on a separate line so something like this let num2 equals to something no it's completely fine to declare two variables on the same line later we can assign it a value okay so now i'm going to say n1 equals to n2 equals to 30 minus 10 minus 2 and now i want you to pause the video and answer what will be the output if i say console.log 
n1 comma n2 and of course i'm missing the semicolon but i'm just going to put the emphasis on the point here not going to talk about if we should use semicolon or not because this is completely optional okay and i have told this many times and i think i'm going to tell this many times again but anyway what will be the output of this code let's evaluate it i can tell you that n1 and n2 both will have the same value now let's find out the answer first and then i will explain you why so so first n1 equals to n2 right and then n2 equals to what 30 minus 10 minus 2 so 30 minus 10 is 20 20 minus 2 is 18 right so we can say 18 now let's come back to our table here you can see it says just ass assignment operators are evaluated from right to left so this equal operator is an assignment operator right so first it will be evaluated from right and then it will be added to the left okay so this 18 will be added to this value okay so it is operated from right to left okay so this 18 will be added to this n2 variable so n2 holds the value of 18 and then this code will be executed so n2 is 18 so n1 is automatically going to get the value 18 because we have two assignment operators here and again because we have two assignment operator here and assignment operator are evaluated from right to left okay so first we have 18 right so what will be the output so output will be n1 equals to n2 equals to 18 and after this we will have n1 equals to 18 because n1 is equals to n2 as well okay so if you save this let me comment this out if i save this uh, reload you see we have 18 18 and i hope i'm making it clear because this is confusing i know this is confusing this might be confusing but trust me if you really go through this precedence table you'll actually figure out that this is not tough at all this equals operator is is evaluating the value from right to left so first it is doing this operation and whatever the result it is storing in this value and then it is following it okay so first this operation was done the value was stored in n2 and whatever the value n2 holds was stored in n1 resulting into n1 n2 having both the same value printed in the console okay now let's talk about the top most precedence that is grouping okay so grouping it says grouping has the precedence of 18 now what is this grouping well this grouping is this board mass so here you can read it says bracket okay so this is where bracket comes into play so let me write a simple code here i'll say console.log 2 plus 2 divided by 2 what will be the output of this code i am giving you 5 seconds pause the video and answer now so the output of this code will be 3 okay so if i save this reload it says 3 and if you said 4 i'm sorry you clearly did not understood the concept of board mass in school you can see that division is performed first okay and then addition right so these two code 2 divided by 2 will be evaluated first which would which would result into 1 and then 1 would be added to 2 okay so it will result into 3 now if you want these two code to be operated first you need to wrap them into a parenthesis so now it has a higher precedence than this division you can see that brackets has a higher precedence of 18 and division has a precedence of 12 so this code will be evaluated first so 2 plus 2 is 4 and then 4 will be divided to 2 resulting into 3 being replaced by 2 so if i save reload now you can see we have 2 i hope you understood what i said take the final example to understand how this grouping actually works and now we are going to find the average age of two people okay so i can say let current i can i think i've already done this over here okay so const current year okay so i'm just going to copy it paste it here and i can 
I cannot redeclare the same variable. So let's do the operation here as well. Okay, here only to be exact. So here I can say that and we we have code as well. So 2025 minus 1991. Okay, but let's do it again. So I can say uh, const age John equals to current year minus the birth year. I can say he was born in 1960. And then I can say const age week okay go ahead with that and he was born in 1999 and now let's find out the average age so I can say const average age equals to age of John and not asterisk plus age of week divided by 2 do you think that this code is the correct code to find out average let's figure out i can say console dot log average age if i save this reload it says 78 but no this is not the correct code this cannot be true and if i if i want to prove it i can prove it that why this is not correct i can actually log in the age of john and wick if i save this you can see that the age of john is 65 and age of week is 26 and the average is 78 so how can average even be higher than one of these two ages okay so this is not possible now one also thing one more important thing you can see here is that i have printed multiple variables output in one console.log statement and this is completely doable okay there is no problem in it okay now how to fix this code well to fix this code we need to understand how do we actually calculate average so we first need to perform these operations first and how do we do that by wrapping it into a bracket because bracket has a higher precedence than division right now this division has higher precedence than multiplication so the first operation that ever going to be performed is this one so age week divided by 2 so age week is 26 so 26 divided by 2 is 13 and then 65 plus 13 is 78 let me explain it so age of john currently is 65 plus age of week is 26 divided by 2 so 26 divided by 2 13 plus 65 is 78 but this formula is wrong we need to calculate this one first okay so now now we will get the average age so now if i reload we get 45.5 okay so i hope this operator thing was crystal clear to you well this was a very long video and i know that this might be a little frustrating if you are a beginner but trust me you need to believe and trust the process these might look and sound tough to you in the beginning but trust me if you watch these videos carefully and try to code along which is obviously the necessity to do if you are following these lectures then trust me you are going to get it you will understand whatever i have said and do not forget to understand what is written over here and most probably you should also read what are these points saying one two three four okay so read them and try to understand them I will see you in the next video so do make sure to subscribe like and share these to the ones whom you think that these lessons might be helpful so see you in the next one strings are one of the very important parts of programming and so let's now learn an easy way of building strings using something called template literals so I'm going to define three variables so first I'm going to define a first name variable and will assign it a value of Jack and then I will define a variable called as job and this will be pirate and you can assume where am I taking it and then the third variable will be birth year so birth year equals to and I'm not sure when was Jack Sparrow born. Captain, Captain Jack Sparrow. I'm sorry, Captain Jack Sparrow born. So I will just assume he was born in 1990. Okay. Now, 
so we are done with the first part now i want to build a string with it so a string that would say something like that jack is a 32 year old pirate or captain jack is a 32 year old pirate so how can we do that so we can say console dot log and then here we can do something like concatenating the strings together we have done this in the previous videos as well but now i'm going to take a slight different approach so i will create a simple variable and i will call it const str and then we'll say that let's go with let's open a double quote okay so inside double quote first we are going to write cap turn and then we will concatenate these three variables together okay so i can say that captain plus again plus and here we will concatenate this first name variable okay so here i will say first name so it will say captain jack so captain plus first name will be captain jack so captain jack and then again here i can say each and then again concatenate job okay and actually here i will have to say a uh, so that captain jack is a pirate and then here i can say and watch and watch born in plus birth year okay so what this string would print let's check so here i will just say str if i save this one uh, refresh you see it says obviously we have some spacing problems here but we can fix them easily but if you read it it says captain jack is a pirate and was born in 1990 so let's fix the spacing issues so here i can provide a space so it will look little readable other than this we could have also done this so we could have provided a simple space here okay so if i save this uh, reload you can see we got a space but a simple solution is to just provide a, a space here and over here as well and here as well and now if i save uh, reload this is a older way of creating a string using variables but now we have a slight modern approach in javascript of creating a string using variables and that is template string now before i talk about template string i want to talk about one very important issue about these quotes so this is double quote right so let me tell you this one is double quote and this is single quote so what we can do is that we can build the strings using both of the strings but always remember that whatever string you are using as the start you must end the string with the same quote as well otherwise there, there will be an issue what i'm talking about let me show you suppose write something like this so i will say i am a teacher you can see that there is no problem but now if you write the same thing using single quote i am a teacher now you can see that there is a problem our string is finishing here and then the rest of the characters are resulting into an error so always remember whenever you are working with strings make sure to keep an eye on the quotes that you are using if it is double quote always end the string with the double quote and if it is if it is a single quote then always end the quote with a single quote and if you want to fix this issue you can simply change this to the double quote okay and now you can see that we are able to use this string this way but otherwise it would not have been possible so always remember that quotation is very important when dealing with strings if you now let's talk about something called template string this is a good way of building string but there is also a better way of building a string so again i can say const a string template just 
for the naming convention you can name it anything now just press the back tick so the back tick is the button which is just on the above of the tab so just below the escape there you find the back tick okay just click it and this is actually template literal now how this template literal gives us an advantage over conventional way of building a string is is that here we don't need to worry about these spacings here you can see we are providing this manual space we are over here we are providing this manual space and then here we are actually manipulating the string itself this is good but this is better that's why this is called modern javascript okay now how let me show you over here we can say captain and now and uh, to print this value over here all we have to do is that we have to reference this first name variable here but how would we do that we would not simply say first name no but we will here use this one so this syntax dollar and a code block and inside this just reference the variable name so now it is captain jack similarly you can also say is a dollar job and again you can say and was born in dollar birth year save this and if you print this str template now if i reload you can see it says captain jack is a pirate and was born in 1990 both of the strings are similar but which one looks more readable here we have to worry about the spacing issue but here we don't have to worry about the spacing issue all you have to do is that just provide a space and that's it so this is template string now one more advantage that we have while using a template literal is that we can actually run some code inside these code blocks so we can write some expressions that would actually evaluate to a value for example suppose that i want to say that captain jack is a pirate and was born in 1990 and he is dash years old so what we can do is that we can actually create a new variable and then we can concatenate that here so age so i can do that i can say const age equals to 2022 minus birth year and then here i can say uh age is dollar age if i save this uh, reload you can say it says 1990 age is 32 now why to create a separate variable for doing this i just mentioned that we can actually perform expressions over here we can actually write the code that would evaluate to a value so let's not do this but simply we are going to say and age dollar 2022 minus birth year years old okay and here you can see that we have no problem of using these quotations so single quote or double quote okay now if i save this reload completely fine captain jack is a pirate and was born in 1990 and age 32 years old so you can see that how easy for us is to use template literals to build strings if we would be doing the same thing using this normal way of building strings we would have to deal with these single quotes double quotes okay so we would have to figure out which quotes to use you can see that how easy is it for us to build a string using template literals i mean we don't really have to worry about all these quotations we can simply use a back tick and inside back tick we can write whatever we want well not whatever we want but however we want our strings to be built so whatever the output we want we can actually do all of that over here now when i say that we can actually run some expressions here now this does not mean that you start to write large quotes inside these blocks no these should be just little quotes that we really do not want to create a new variable for this way of building a string is just a syntactical sugar over it but to be honest in my real opinion i find this one to be a game changer 
when i was starting out to learn javascript i had to really worry about how to join these strings and provide them spacing so i was always worrying about i know this is not something big issue like someone is dropping a nuclear bomb on me but still issues like this in programming are very very frustrating and template literals solved it next up we are going to talk about if else so how to take decisions in javascript so please like the video and comment your opinion on it and if it is possible then please make sure to subscribe as well so let's now learn about if else in javascript so we use if else to take decisions based on a certain condition i'm going to explain it in a real layman term okay so trust me you are going to master it so i'm just going to define a variable i'll call it const age equals to let's go with 16 as the value okay now suppose we want to check that if this is a minor or a major so someone who is a full age or is a minor so here in india if you are above 18 you are considered adult but if you are below 18 you are considered a teenager okay so we can check if this age is actually more than the required age to be considered as a legal adult so how can we check that we can check this using if else statement so to check this we simply have to say if and then a parenthesis and inside parenthesis goes the condition so here i can actually say if age is greater than or equals to see greater than or equals to okay so we are actually saying that if age is greater than or equals to 18 then a code block now if this statement is true then this code is going to run so here i can say console.log the person is a legal adult okay now if i save this code and if i execute what do you think will happen well it would not print anything if i reload the browser you can see i'm reloading it again and again and we are seeing no output why because this statement is false age is not greater than or equals to 18 age is 16 but if i change this to 19 now if i save this now you will see this output okay so now if i reload the person is a legal legal adult now you can also see that i'm not using the backtick string so the template literal and you might be thinking that in previous video i said that i find the template literals the best way to build a string so why am i not using that and the reason is that we are not building a string over here using different variables we are simply writing something okay so it is always good if you are writing something over here which does not involve a lot of different variables to be involved directly in the string when you are building the string it is always considered to use template literals as it is very useful and we have already seen that in the previous video okay so just to clarify why i used this way of writing this string here now when this age was 15 we see that nothing happened why well the reason is that so we did not write code to check if age is less than 18 then what should we do now that we can do in this block so now we can say else do this console.log the person is not a legal adult so this statement if it is true this code will execute otherwise this code will execute so now if i save this you will see this output so the person is not a legal adult or you can say or is a minor save this reload the person is not a legal adult or is a minor why because this expression evaluated to false okay so age is not greater than equals to 18 because age is 15 now we can also check how many years are left 
for this person to turn into an adult so now we can use this template literals so now here we can directly calculate how much years are left so here we can say wait for dollar and the legal age is 18 so 18 minus age and then here I can say years okay and if I save this and if I reload you can see it says the person is not a legal adult or is a minor wait for three years okay so this is if else if else let's us take decisions based on a certain conditions now this is not just it we have advanced stages of if else as well but it is not really very difficult to understand but still i will not explain that right now i just want to take it slowly okay if i start to talk about those things it might not make much sense to you right now so we will talk about the advanced stages of if else little bit later well maybe two or three videos from now but anyway this one was a very quick video which discussed about the possible use cases of if else hey everyone in this video we will learn about the value types so types are one of the fundamental aspects in programming and converting between types is something that we do in every programming language for example converting a string to a number or a number into a boolean is something that we do all the time and so it's important that we learn about this before we move further javascript is a language that sometimes behaves weird and we really need to understand why because learning javascript concepts is one thing but understanding the code output is different thing you can learn the javascript concepts very fast but you might get confused upon seeing the code output if you don't pay attention to little things so that's why i made sure that i talk about those topics as well which aren't really given importance because these are considered not so important topics but are really very crucial for you to understand to become very good at javascript which is our original goal the goal is not to become an expert as there is no such thing but to really understand the process of the output a code returns now just one request if you have not subscribed the channel please 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 make sure to subscribe and you can also ask if a topic is confusing you and i will make a separate video on it now in javascript there is type conversion and type coercion now they sound very similar but they are different so type conversion is when we manually convert from one type to another on the other hand type coercion is when javascript automatically converts types behind the scenes for us so that's necessary in some situations but it happens implicitly completely hidden from us okay so let's start with type conversion which remember is when we explicitly want to convert from one type to another so let's say that we have an input field on a web page on which a user has to enter their birth year and these inputs from input fields usually comes as a string so here i have declared a variable called input year and here i can say that we are receiving a string 1991 now what if i try to find out that at what year this person who is born in 1991 will turn an adult and to do that we need to add 18 to it right so what if i say console dot log input year plus 18 what do you think will be the output please pay a closer attention that this is a string and this is a number so we are actually adding a string and number so what do you think will be the output do you think that we will print so 1991 plus 18 I think it should be 2009 so yes it would be 2009 so in year 2009 a person who was born in 1991 will turn would have turned an adult right so if I refresh you will see little different output 
Okay, so we have this weird output. Well, not so very difficult to understand, but still weird. So what happened is that string and the number got concatenated. So remember in previous video, we understood how string concatenation works. So that you can see here as a real example. So 1991 plus 18 is not 2009, which it should have been, but it is this long number. So 199118. By the way, this output is not a number. It's a string. So always remember, let me write down a comment. When we add a string and a number, the output is a string. Okay. So when we add a string and a number, the output is a string. Actually, I can prove it. So here I can say console dot log type of input year if i reload you can see it says a string from 192 so 192 is a string and if i duplicate the same code and now uh, if i save this input year plus 18 into a variable i will say uh, const con Concatenated equals to input year plus 18. So if I now try to find out the type of of this expression reload, you will see that we are also getting a string. So this is also a string. Hence it is proved that when we add a string and a number, the output is a, a string. But wait, now you can ask that okay, so if this is the issue when someone is entering some number in a web page we are actually catching it as a string so how do we actually calculate this 1991 plus 18 and here comes type conversion so in javascript we can convert a type from one to another right now it is a string but by using a simple function we can actually convert the type of string to a number how does that work well we can simply use number function yes it's literally number here pay a close attention that the name of the function starts with an uppercase so number and now we can just open a parenthesis and this is a number function now at this point we really have not talked about functions but you don't need to worry as we will learn all about functions in great details little bit later now this number function actually takes this input here and converts the type of a string to a number so this number function takes this input here and converts its value from a string to number so here i can reference input here okay and if i now console dot log and if i reload you will see that this is 1991 now how can i actually say that this is a number and not a string because from here it is really not clear and for that we actually need to compare this converted value to this original value so here i can reference original input string so what i have done is that this code might look little confusing to you but it's really not we are using multiple output into a single console.log statement so first we are actually outputting the converted value of a string into a number and then the string itself so if i save this reload you will actually see that both of them are printed into different colors you can see that the string value is printed into a light green and then the original number is printed into the purple so here you can see it detonates so here you can see it says that this is a string but this is number so input year converted into a number by this function and the original input year still remains unchanged and it is a string and here it is clearly visible now all we can do is that we can convert this input year into a number and then that would be added to 18 so all we have to do is let's comment this out and here I just have to say number input year and that's it now all I have to say that we don't want to find the type of but we want to actually find out the result okay so if I now save reload we get 
2009 why because now it is not string 1991 but it is number 1991 added to a number so this is type conversion when we manually convert one particular type into another particular type now what if we try to convert something to a number that is impossible to convert to a number so let's try that with a string so here i can say console.log convert string john wick into a number so javascript will look at the string and will try to convert it to a number but it won't really work so if i refresh it gives us this value none which stands for not a number so javascript gives us this not a number value whenever an operation that involves number fails to produce a new number so basically not a number actually means invalid number it's not really not a number and let me actually prove that to you so we can say console dot log and we can check the type of of not a number and you will see this weird result that it says that the type of of not a number is actually a number and so again not a number actually means an invalid number it's still a number somehow but it's an invalid number and so again we get not a number whenever an operation involving numbers fails to give us a new number and actually we have discussed about all of this when we studied about data types in javascript in detail few videos ago so you can watch this video in the i button to get a conceptual overview of how all of this works okay so that is converting strings to a number but we can also do the opposite it's little less important but i still want to show it to you so we can actually convert a number to a string so here i can say console dot log and now i can use the string function to convert a number into a string so here i have used the string function so here you can notice that the function name starts with a capitalized letter okay so now if i save you can see it is 99 so we can actually check the type of so i can say type of and now you will see it says a string okay and there is also another way of finding out if the output is a string or if it is something else and what's that and that is simply logging out both the value and checking the color so here i can simply say 99 so if i reload you can see that the string is printed into white and the number is printed into purple so the colored value is actually the real number and white value is a string okay now javascript can only convert to three types so we can convert to a number to a string or to a boolean but cannot convert something to undefined or to null that does not make a lot of sense now here we only converted to numbers and to strings but not to booleans and that's because booleans behave in a special way and for that reason there is a separate video next on so called truthy and falsy values so this was type conversion now we have type coercion so this was type conversion where we manually convert from one type to another however in practice we rarely have to do it manually because javascript actually does type coercion automatically for us in many situations so let's talk about type coercion now so i'm just going to comment out all of these codes and here i will write a comment type coercion okay so type coercion so basically type coercion happens whenever an operator is dealing with two values that have different types so in that case javascript will then behind the scenes convert one of the values to match the other value so that in the end the operation can be executed and actually we have already seen this previously if you remember so let me show you so we did something like this console dot 
log f yeah, z is a thirty two years old pirate, right? we did this previously so first we have a string and then we have this number and then we have this string so this in the result produced a wholesome string so if i save reload you see that this is a string again we have some spacing issues but this is a string and this is a number by the way so how does type coercion works well this string plus a number resulted into an overall string so what we are doing is that we are actually taking a number and then we are concatenating it to a string so this is type coercion javascript does this automatically so if we would not have been having type coercion in javascript then we would have to do this manually so here we would have to say that convert this into a number okay but thanks to type coercion we don't have to manually say that convert this number to a string and thanks to type coercion writing this would be same as writing this where we manually converted the number into a string but now we don't have to do that because it is done automatically by type coercion now one thing to remember here is that not all the operators do type coercion to strings so let me show you something else so if we do 30 the string minus 10 the string minus 5 the number what do you think will be the output so let's actually check and it gives us 15 the number so what happened here so it looks like this time javascript converted the strings to numbers because 30 minus 10 is 20 and then 20 minus 5 is 15 and so what this means is that the minus operator actually triggers the opposite conversion so in this case strings are converted to the numbers and not the other way around so this is a very important distinction to keep in mind because this actually confuses many javascript beginners when they don't know about this so let's try another one here so the string 30 multiplied to the string 3 so we get 90 the number and again you are going to see that these values are converted to number and indeed we get 90 the number because both of them are now converted to numbers because that's the only way this multiplier operator can work and same of course will be true for the division as well so we get 10 the number okay so i hope that this distinction between type conversion and type coercion is now pretty clear and now to make sure that we understood all of this let's play a game now the name of the game is let's guess the output and i just invented it so here i'm going to write the code let n equals to string 1 plus number 1 and then n equals to n minus 1 and then a simple console.log n now i want you to pause the video and decode the code to find out the value of n and and i'm very hopeful that you will be able to find out the value of n so pause the video right now let's now go ahead and deconstruct the code line by line so let n equals to string 1 plus 1 would result into 11 why an 11 of string not 11 because by using plus operator we are concatenating the string and the number and the final value would actually be a string and then from here we are subtracting it so this string will now be converted back to a number because here we are using the minus operator so now it would actually result into 11 the number minus 1 so it would be 10 let's save this reload and here you can see it's 10 okay 
and so now let's do one more example and then we will wrap up and this time I'm just going to write all the code in the browser console itself so I can click this button to clear or I can actually press the shortcut command K okay and now here I'm going to write 12 plus 4 plus 3 and then plus the string 5 and now it resulted into 195 why because 12 plus 4 plus 3 is 19 and then the string concatenated to the number 19 is resulting into the string 195 okay and it's pretty clear because we already have talked how it works and then one more example is string 10 minus string 4 minus string let's go with 6 minus the number 2 plus string 8 and now it's minus 28 how because 10 minus 4 is 6 and 6 minus 6 is 0 0 minus 2 is minus 2 and then minus 2 plus and this time we are using plus okay so minus 2 plus 8 would actually concatenate to become the string minus 28 now you might be wondering why are we talking about this type coercion thing so much but it's really important that you know this right from the start so that you can write your code with all of this in mind now many people actually do not like type coercion and think that it's a bad practice to rely on type coercion one reason is that type coercion can in fact introduce many unexpected bugs into our program but this only happens when you don't really know what we are doing so when we don't know about the stuff that i just showed you but you know this right and for you it will be easier to avoid errors and in my opinion coercion is actually a great mechanism for writing lot less and more readable code so make sure to take time and understand it clearly also please like subscribe and comment if you need a video on a separate topic i will see you in the next one so we talked about type conversion and type cohesion to numbers and to strings but i didn't mention booleans yet right that is because we need to learn the concept of truthy and falsy values first and so that is what we are going to learn in this video so let's get right into it so falsy values are values that are not exactly false but will become false when we try to convert them into a boolean so just the way we converted a number into a string and we converted a string back to a number so the same way if we try to convert these values they will initially be resulted into a truthy values but the final result when they will be actually converted to boolean they will result into false and in javascript there are only five falsy values and let me actually write it down here so five falsy values in javascript and they are zero an empty string so a string which does not hold any data are called empty string and then the value undefined itself and then null and not a number and of course false itself is already false so we don't need to include it in the list of falsy values so again all of these five values will be converted to false when we attempt to convert them to a boolean they are not exactly false initially but they will become when converted to a boolean so that's the definition of falsy values everything else are our so called truthy values so values that will be converted to true for example any number that is not zero which means one two one thousand one lakh or any string that is not an empty string will be converted to true when we attempt to convert them to a boolean so this zero is a falsy value but one is a 
truthy value this empty string is a falsy value but if there is a string that contains some word or character in it it will result into a true value now this might be going over your head but will become crystal clear with few examples so let's see all of this practically to make it clear so here i'm going to write console.log and just the way we converted a number to a string and a string to a number by using a string function and this number function same way we can actually convert a value or actually we can check if the value can be converted to a boolean or not so for this we can use a similar but different boolean function and now we can pass this boolean function a value to check if it is a truthy value or if it is a falsy value so here we can pass this zero and let me actually duplicate it three times and then here i will pass an defined and here i will pass an empty string and then a string that has some character so i will write john wick my favorite character and then an empty object now at this moment we really have not talked about object but don't worry i will not be talking about object right now so there will be a separate lecture on object where we will completely understand how object actually works in javascript okay but right now as i just mentioned that by default there are some values which are not exactly false so this object will result into true and that's why i have kept it here so if i save and if i reload hmm, you see that this console.log boolean zero resulted into false why because this is a falsy value and i just mentioned that if we try to convert these values to a boolean these will result into false so we have checked for zero being resulted to a false when we attempt to convert it into a boolean and then for similar we get false for undefined as well and then we have an empty string resulted into false as well but here you can see that a string that contains some character or here some words resulted into true and then obviously we have this object which resulted into true as well but this was just for the demo so you can actually ignore this one well i won't say to ignore but hold this in your memory but don't worry much about it if it is not making much sense to you you can see that these values well we have not checked about all of them if you want to check you can check for null and nan as well so let me do that pretty quickly i can say null not a number save this and this would be capital reload and now you can see that all of the five ever five values are converted into a false value but a string that contains a character resulted into true now i also said that a number that is not zero is a true value so i can actually say console.log 10 and this will result into true so re reload and you can see it says true from line 231 so this is what truthy and falsy values are and this is how we convert these to booleans but in practice we rarely convert a value to boolean by using boolean function this was just to show you the concept of truthy and falsy values so in practice the conversion to boolean is always implicit not explicit it means that it is always type coercion that javascript does automatically behind the scenes but when javascript actually does type coercion well it happens in two scenario first when using a logical operator and second in a logical context for example in a condition of an if else statement and we are going to talk about logical operator in next video so let's go back to the if else statement and see how type cohesion works in the if else condition so here i'm going to take an example and i'm going to say let salary equals to zero and then 
I am going to write an if else statement. First, I am going to write it, and then I will explain you what I meant by it. So I am going to say if salary, then I can say console dot log. Well, enjoy my friend. Else, we can say console dot log. Hmm. I hope you get paid soon. So let me explain you what we actually did here. So I have declared a variable salary and have set the initial amount to zero. And then we are checking if salary. Then console. Well, enjoy, my friend, because you just received your salary. Else. just tell them that you are hoping that they get paid soon so if i reload you see that the else block executed but why well we know that salary is a number right now and this number is zero but in the logical context of an if else statement condition so that's right here in these parentheses here javascript will try to coerce any value into a boolean so no matter what you put here if it is not a boolean then javascript will try to convert it to a boolean and that's what exactly happening here and that happens using truthy and falsy value rules that we just discussed in the beginning so we know salary here is zero but zero is a false value here you can see that zero is a false value so in this logical environment this zero will be converted to false and so when this will convert it to false the else block will execute so that's how this code is actually executing now if you put something here other than zero if you say 200 no matter what then this value is true so here you can see a number other than 0 is a truthy value so now if you reload you see it says well enjoy my friend because now this salary variable is 200 and in this logical if else statement context this resulted to true resulting into this block being executed and now we can take another example to test this in another situation to really make sure that you understand this and i also want to show you something important so this example will make everything crystal clear so another huge case for this truthy and false value is to check if a variable is actually defined or not and this might sound like a weird case but you will see later in the course that it actually makes a lot of sense sometimes to check if something actually exists or not so here i'm just going to say let height and that's it so i have just declared an empty variable and now i am going to check for a condition and i'm going to say if height then console dot log height is defined and in the else block i am just going to say console dot log height is not defined so now i want you to pause the video and try to analyze this code and try to figure out what will be the output well this is really not very difficult you can take a look at these codes and you can also read this to find out what will be the output of this code so pause the video and try to answer now So now let me tell you that this else block will execute and so the reason why this block will execute is really not very difficult to understand because we have just declared an empty variable so remember when we talked about values and variables i told you that when we declare a variable without any value it is assigned a value of undefined so undefined is our false value and so here you can see that undefined resulted into this false so 
when undefined is evaluated in this block of the if else execution context this code will execute why because this will in turn to false so if this statement is false or actually if this this code execution resulted into false then else will execute so if i reload it says height is not defined and now if i change the height to something else i can say 1.6 obviously this is in meter and if i reload now you see it says height is defined now you can say that all right so what is so important in this this was really very easy for me to answer now when we set the value of 1.6 to this height variable then this code executed because in this if else block this if condition resulted to true however with this we can actually run into a problem so let's say that height is zero for some reason and this is a perfectly valid number but watch what happens when we run this code now so if i reload now you see it says height is not defined and why is that so you can answer this one easily because zero is also a falsy value and this will then trigger this else block but in this case we don't want this so this is kind of a bug or you can say it is an error in our application because here in this if else statement we didn't accounted for this scenario we only checked for the scenario that the height is either defined or not but we never thought about height being zero right so now we get height is not defined even though that is not true so this is just to illustrate an example that there can be problems using this approach however we can fix this using logical operators which is very interesting to learn and very important as well and we will talk about that after next video but first in the next lecture we need to talk about equality operator so i will see you in the next one so please make sure to subscribe if you have not already and like the video to let the algorithm bless the channel i will see you in the next one so far we have only used comparison operators to take decisions with if else statements right but let's suppose we want to check if two values are actually equal instead of one being greater or less than the other and for that we have different equality operators so i am simply going to declare a variable called age and will store value 18 to it and so let's now create an if statement which will log to the console that the person just became an adult only if the age is exactly 18 so we can use an if statement and then we can use the triple equal operator to check if age is exactly equals to 18 and then we can write our code block so this is triple equals operator so this triple equals operator will check that if the age is exactly equals to 18 and so if it is exactly equals to 18 we are simply going to say console dot log yeah you turned an adult okay so i hope there should be no problem at all to understand these codes okay we have already talked about how if else works and we have already talked about const as well okay so if i save what do you think we will print obviously we are going to print a you turn an adult if i reload uh, we get it okay now what if i write 20 here what do you think will be the output reload yeah we do not see any output okay now why do we not see any output because we did not wrote the else statement okay but we are not going to talk about that you can simply write it so i can say else console dot log i got different value if i save reload i got different value okay because we are just checking if age is 18 or not if it is above than 18 Above than twenty, it doesn't matter. We are just checking if age is exactly equals to eighteen. Now, 
other than this way of checking if age is exactly equals to 18 or not using triple equal operator we also have double equals operator so now if i save it let me just put it back to 18 if i save and if i reload you see we get yay u turn and adult again but now what is the difference between this two equals operator and this three equals operator well very simple to understand the three equals operator does not do type coercion but the two equals operator does type coercion now what do i mean by this let me prove it right here okay so actually i can do that here as well so here i can write the code so what do i mean by this is that if i write 18 the number equal 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 18 the number hit enter you see we get true right very easy to understand 18 is number 18 is number but if i do the same with the string 18 equal 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 number 18 now it says false because this equality operator is exactly checking if both these data types or both these data are same but no this is not same this is a string and this is number so that's why it returned false but if you run the same code with a double operator it will return this true so what it does is that this this double equals operator does type coercion so it exactly converts this 18 the string into 18 the number and then it exactly compares both of them so the only difference is that let me write down here triple equals operator this one does not do type conversion but this one does type conversion okay and it automatically converts the type and then it checks it okay and this is also called as strict operator strict operator and then this one is loose loose equals equals operator okay okay so now let me explain you all of this with an example so i have pasted few lines of code which is really not very difficult to understand and also it is not different than the example we used above so here i have just declared an age variable and have set it to 18 and here we are using two if statements to check for two different operators so first one in the first one we are exactly using the strict comparison which checks if both the values are exactly same and then on the second if statement we are actually evaluating for the loose equality operators and now if i save the file what do you think will be the output and so now first let's evaluate the code and then we will think about the output and so what will happen here so this code will evaluate to true right and resulting into this block being executed why true because this age is 18 so let me replace this age to 18 so 18 the number is exactly equals to 18 the number and so, so this age and this 18 both of them are equals and so this block will evaluate to true similarly this age 18 is also equals equals to 18 so this will also evaluate to true why because both of them are number so this is number this is number okay so see this age variable is different so this is the actual value of the variable but this is the number that we are putting here okay so this is not the value of the variable this is the number that has been written by us to check okay now let me again shift it back to age and now if i save both of them if evaluated to true then both of the if statements will execute and if i reload you see we get u turned an adult from a strict comparison so from a strict comparison as well as from the loose comparison because both of these evaluated to true now what if i change this 18 to the string 18 focus this is a string 18 now this is now no more a number 18 this is just a string 18 what do you think will be the output now so now let's evaluate so now this age will in turn be replaced with this string 18 and so remember this operator 
does not do type conversion okay so this is a strict operator so it will check if both the value are exactly same so these are not exactly same this is a string and we are comparing a string with a number using this strict equality operator so triple equals so this expression will evaluate to false so this code will not execute okay and here actually you can see that uh, if you can actually figure out the difference between the colors of this one and this one you can see that this is slightly faded away but nevertheless we are here to actually understand how the code execution works okay so string 18 number 18 false so let's put it back to the age variable but here the age is 18 okay so this is exactly the string 18 okay so now this string 18 equals to 18 and and so it actually does type coercion and so this block will evaluate to true okay and so let's see it so we can exactly say that the output will be this one if i save reload you see it says you turned an adult lose comparison okay because this is now a string so i hope this is not really too confusing to you because this lose equality operator is full of weird rules and behaviors it means that if we use this one here this can introduce many hard to find bugs into our code so as a general rule for writing clean code and actually i want you to take a note of this is that never use this double equals operator please do not use this double equals operator this can really be a real frustration for you when you start to develop real world web apps okay so uh, yeah as a general rule for writing clean code avoid using lose equality operator even though it does type conversion but don't use it why because you can actually do type conversion manually so by using number function okay so if you want to turn this string into a number you can actually use number why to do that okay and actually i can do that here okay so if i change this to a number and this is perfectly valid and if i change this to number if i now save it now you will see both of the output here so you see both of the output output why because now this age is not a string 18 but it is a number 18 and has been converted by this number function okay and so this is what i want to show you now i want to show you few more things now the first thing that i want to show you is that there is a pretty simple way of getting a value from any web page and we can do that using the prompt function so let me comment these codes and then here we simply have to say prompt and this is a function now we have not talked about functions yet i know but trust me these prompt functions number functions are really not very difficult to understand okay and so we will learn about functions little bit later but let me show you how prompt actually works and this is really very easy to understand okay so suppose you want to retrieve some information from the web page in the form of a dialog box so all you can say is that you can say prompt and then a set of parentheses and here you can exactly elaborate your question so i'm going to say what is your favorite number okay and so if you save this script reload the browser you see this pop up with this question that you just described so this is what is your favorite number so this prompt is this one so this dialog box is exactly the prompt and this is the question and so here you can enter your number so suppose i say 67 okay i can press ok or i can hit the return or enter on our keyboard and that's it the number has been sent but we do not see that over here in the console and the reason is that we really have not got hold of it so we need to save it into a variable so i can say const favorite equals to prompt and so now whenever we enter the number that will be saved to this favorite variable and so again now i can say console dot log favorite okay 
and so again let's test it and now if I say 24 if I hit return you see we get 24 now this is a string not a number so remember we talked about how we receive a string from a input field on the web page so whenever we enter something on the web page we get that in the form of a string and we can actually say that this is a string by simply looking at the color as well so remember how i taught you that you can exactly figure out if a number is actually a number or a string by simply looking at its color so this is in white which means this is not a number this is a string and i can actually prove it by using this type of operator so i can say type of favorite and uh, yeah we need to enter the number again so any number would work even 2400 and so now 2400 is a string okay but this is not what i want to show you so now i'm going to use this if statement to check if uh, the user has entered our favorite number so i can say if favorite equals 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 uh, 45 I can say console dot log console dot log four five is a cool number. Okay, four five is a cool number. Uh, now if I save this again, if I reload, and if I say forty five, hit enter. Hmm, we did not show any output. Why? The reason why we did not show any output is that we are using the strict equality operator. So this favorite is a string so remember the output the input exactly the input that we got from the web page is a string and then we are actually comparing the string 45 with the number 45 so this expression would evaluate to false hence this code will not execute okay and so for this what we need to do is that we need to type cast whatever number or whatever input that we are getting from the web page into the number so here we can exactly typecast the entire prompt function so i can say number okay so we are simply saying that hey javascript whatever input you are getting as a number using this prompt function just turn them into a number and so now this will be evaluated with not the string 45 but with the number 45 okay and so now it will evaluate to true hence this console.log printing here in the console only based on this condition if the favorite number that we would be entering right now will be 45 so if i save and if i reload and if i say 45 we see 45 is a cool number but again if i reload it and if i say 35 now we see no output why because we really have not wrote any else block however now this brings me to my next point which is another cool thing that we can do and that is that we can actually add more conditions to an if else statement so far we have only used if and then this else block okay but now we can also add an else if block okay so how it works is that we can actually put another condition for the program to test so here i can write else if and then the set of parentheses with this block so what we are actually saying is that we are saying that if favorite number is this one so if this statement is true then execute this code else if this statement is true so i can say favorite number equals to 35 i can again say console.log 35 is a cool number okay so now we are checking for multiple terms so first one is if 45 execute this code else if favorite number is 35 then execute this code and again we can check else if there is some more condition we can exactly check if favorite number is a string 45 okay we can also do this so again i can say 45 is a number but in a string okay and then else if all of this turned to false then simply say console.log oh no i did not received any number and how do we put 
how do we actually print this sad emoji so this is how okay so if i save this and now if i reload now i can say 35 okay so if i say 35 you will see that this code will execute if i hit okay 35 is a cool number so reload again so now if i say 45 hit enter it says 45 is a cool number and if i reload again and now if i enter number that is neither 45 nor 35 and let's go with 78 you will see this output so oh no i did not received any number so okay and now to finish there is also an operator for different so we talked about equal but of course there must be an operator that does the opposite and so that's the different operator and so now let's check if the favorite is different than 45 so here i can say if and then again i can say uh, favorite but this time we are going to use the different operator so here just print the exclamation and then double equals operator and then here you can exactly write the number and so what this will test is that it will simply say if favorite is not equals to 45 then execute this statement so here we are just going to say console dot log why not 45 this is also a cool number and yeah a laughing emoji why not always be positive so if i save and if i reload and let's enter a number other than 45 if i hit 65 you see we get first this block is also executing since we entered another number and so we did not match any number and hence this above code is also true but we are not going to care about this one you can simply see that we did not enter the number 45 and so we received why not 45 this is also a cool number okay so this is how it works so again other than this this is the strict equality not equality but strict different operator we have also lose one but again don't use the lose one just for the same reason always use this strict operator okay so this is the different operator simply opposite okay so if favorite is not equals to this number then return this message now, now the last thing that i want to show you is that in javascript if you have a single statement inside a code block you can actually omit these code blocks and you can write the entire code on the same line now what do i mean by this let me duplicate this and here you can see that we just have single console.log statement inside this code block so rather than using this code block or rather than creating these code blocks for writing a single statement we can actually get rid of this okay and so now i can place this code right next to the if block and it would work perfectly fine so this code and this code both of them are same the only difference is that since this block had only one statement we can actually get rid of these code blocks of course if you have multiple statements then this method would not work but if you have single statement then you can actually get rid of these code blocks okay and now if i save this uh, reload and uh, what is your favorite number let's write 78 which should be other than 45 for these two codes to execute so if i say uh, 78 hit enter you see we get both the output so from 297 so from 297 and from 299 so oh no i did not receive any number was executed from this and then why not 45 this is also a cool number and the same output is here as well okay so now we have understood many important things in javascript okay so let's now move on but uh, yeah if you feel like you have learned something important do make sure to like the video and subscribe to code block i will keep bringing important lectures like this so far we have understand how to take decisions based on single test cases for example here we are checking if favorite number is equals to 45 
then do this else if favorite number is 35 then do this now what if we have to check for multiple test cases for example we want to evaluate if favorite number is equals to 45 as well as favorite number is less than 50 then only do something then only say that 45 is a cool number as well as it is less than 50 so to do this we will have to understand how javascript logical operators works so i have written few lines of comments here which are really not difficult for you to understand even in plain english but trust me i'm gonna explain you everything so if you read it says logical operators perform logical operations so there are mainly two logical operators in javascript these are and and or and by the way these are also called as boolean logical operators okay and so uh, third one is not but not is really not very difficult to understand it just flips the original value that and and or outputs so here i have already talked about that okay so it's exactly like that but nevertheless we are going to see that again now let's write a program so that we can understand how and and or works in real life and then we will go back to our this example where we are going to clarify some of the things that we missed earlier well we did not missed earlier but just to you know uh, revisit we are going to write all of this program again okay and so the first thing we are going to do here is that we are going to read this statement so uh, these two statements says that condition to enter a bar okay so to enter a bar you have to be an adult which means plus 18 years of age and have a partner so at least in india if you want to enter a bar you must be an adult and uh, i don't know if this have a partner thing is it needs to be true or not but at least uh, you need to be an adult uh, until and unless you uh, you know <laughs> develop a fake id but anyway so uh, let's now write a program so that we can write test cases to uh, uh, see how we can enter if if a person can enter the bar or not so i'm going to declare two variables i'll say uh, one is let um, what is adult i'll say yes adult and since semicolon is optional i'm not skipping it i'm providing semicolon but uh, if you do if you want to skip you can skip and then the second variable will be uh, with i'll say each with partner and i will say uh, true or let's say false because i want to show you something okay and then here i can say if and then this block so what goes inside so what goes inside is the combination of both of these value so here we are going to write each adult and each with partner now this is the and symbol for this and operator so in javascript you literally print these two symbols with the combination of shift and seven on your keyboard so if you press shift and number seven on your keyboard you will print this and symbol and there are two it's not just one but there are two and symbol now this is the huge cases of and operator and so now here goes the code block so whatever you write right inside will be executed once this prints to true or this evaluates to true now how does this evaluates to true now how does and operator works is that in case of and operator both the value should be true then only the block will be considered true and code block will execute yes this is the rule of uh, and operator and that is that both of the value needs to be true in order for this entire expression to evaluate to true any of them if is false then the entire a statement will be false and this line of code will not be executed so here if i say console.log 
one of the error. So that's one of the error. Okay. And uh, then here I will write else. Console dot log. I say else log. I see. Okay. Now if I save this, I will reload. Hmm. It says else block block executed. Why? Because this evaluated this entire statement evaluated to false. Why? Because one of them are false. So is adult is true, but is with partner is false, which means you are not with a partner, which means you are not allowed to enter a bar. And so this entire statement evaluated to false because we are using an AND operator. And so this line of code did not executed, but the else block executed. Now to fix this issue, we have to use OR operator. In AND, it simply means that this and this both needs to evaluate to true. But no, this part is true. This is adult is true. But this is with partner is false. Okay, so false. And so if you read AND operator, both the values should be true. Then only the block will be considered true and code block will execute. Now, if you want to fix this, if you want to change the scenario, uh, for example, first of all, let's check for the both of the true cases. Okay. So if I change this with true, which means that uh, you are adult. Okay. Fulfilling the condition. You are adult. You are with a partner. Yes. True. Now, if I save, if I reload, you will see that uh, this block will execute. And uh, yeah, we need to change the sentence as well. We'll say uh, enter the bar and enjoy okay and so if i reload say enter the bar and enjoy why because now this is also true and this is also true but if any of them turns to false and you are using an end operator then the entire statement or expression will be evaluated to false okay now how to fix this like for example uh, you want to change the status to enter a bar or to be exact you want to change the condition to enter a bar you just want to say that either you need to be an adult or either you need to have a partner and then you will be able to enter the bar you don't need to fulfill both of the conditions because there are uh, many uh, who wants to enter the bar but they are single and so uh, you really do not want to deny them the entry okay so how do you write a program which would help you to deal with this scenario so now here i'm going to write another test case okay so this is with and operator and now i'm going to teach you how to deal in this scenario where uh, having a partner is optional okay so now you'll write if is adult and is with come on with partner then do this okay enter the bar and enjoy and then i'm going to write else i'll say console dot log else block executed okay now i have used this and operator but no now we no longer need this and operator but now we need this or operator or simply means if is adult or is with partner then do this so in or operator if any of the variable returns true then the entire statement or the entire expression evaluates to true it's legit or okay so or if any one of the variable is true then entire expression evaluates true true okay sign for or is just to pipe like this so if you press shift and there's a button just below the delete it simply means that if is adult or is with partner then do this else do this okay so now if i uh, make any one of them false i will say uh, yeah is adult is true but if with partner i'll say no uh, he's not with partner so false but still you will be able to enter the bar and enjoy so if i reload 
see enter the bar and enjoy the first statement the first if else uh, executed else block because we are using an and operator and and operator checks for both the cases which needs to be true but no uh, each with partner is false and so this else block executed where you could have, you could have also said that uh, not allow please fulfill all the conditions okay. and now if you reload it says else block executed not allowed please fulfill all the conditions but while using this or operator we are allowed to enter the bar and enjoy now if you talk about this not operator then what it does is it simply flips the original value to the different value so if it is true if you will use this not operator on this is adult value or variable then the value will simply turn to false and same if you use on this is with partner then the false will turn to true so here if i just simply use this not operator which is remember just this not sign so exclamation sign to be exact if you print this exclamation sign now this is false right but what it does is it makes this entire variable turn to true and so now if i save this file then let's evaluate what will happen and so now this statement will execute so from line 315 so far uh, well it's 317 we were getting this output else block executed but now you will see that this output will see this output enter the bar and enjoy even though we have not changed the value itself but here we have just used the logical not operator and so it flips the original value to true or whatever you have assigned it it just flips the original value to the other so true turns to false and false turns to true and so now if i reload of course i have saved this file you see come on you see it says enter the bar and enjoy now let's really evaluate so that everything will be crystal clear so is adult is true but is with partner on original line it's saved to false but here we have used this logical not operator which means is that this is with partner is now true and actually i can show you if i say console dot not not is with partner see this is false right but from 19 we will see true if i save reload you see true from line 313 and uh, uh, if i change this one is adult it will show false so it really just flips the original value to the other one so true becomes false and false becomes true and so now let's come back to our original program and try to write program for uh, this test cases so uh, let's do it here okay so this is end so i'm just going to cut this right here okay so this is end and this is or and not simply flips the value okay and so here i'm going to say uh, let fab number equals to um, what 40 uh, 50 okay so i'll say if fab number fab num equals to uh, 30 or oh, 50 and fab number is less than equals to uh, 60 then only do something so I can say uh, what fab num is 50 and it is less than 60 uh, else if I can say fab number is equals to 50 uh, or fab num equals to equals to 60 any of them then I will say console.log fab number is either 50 or 60 okay so now if you save this reload it says fab number is 50 and it is less than 60 of course it is 50 and it is less than 60 but now if you just say 60 reload 
Now you say it says fab number is either 50 or 60. So 60 is really not less than 50. But yeah, we have written the condition to check if fab number is 50 or fab number is 60. Then tell us that fab number is either 50 or 60. And if not, then we have also used an operator as well. So if fab number is 50 and fab number is less than 60, then return us this line now i want to apologize in advance because i almost forget to tell you one very important thing to keep in mind while dealing with logical operators now we are not limited to using only one logical operators in a single parenthesis in a single code block actually we can combine multiple logical operators at once so for example uh, just think that if the condition to enter the bar is it needs to be an adult who can enter the bar with a partner and both of them wearing black dress so we can combine this to make one logical sentence out of it so uh, where is the variables so here is the variable I'm just going to take this okay and I'm gonna paste it here and I will just take it into account and I will declare one more variable I will say R in black dress and I will say yes they are in black dress and so now we can check that is adult is with partner are in black dress so now we are going to say that is adult and is partner is with partner and are in black dress now if all of these three will turn to true then only you can enter the bar otherwise no you cannot enter the bar so now if I save this you see if I reload you say else block executed why because one of them is false so each with partner is false okay so now if I change this to true now we will be able to enter the bar right but now what if we uh, if we just want to take this in black dress optional okay so I can say no they are not in black dress but they surely can enter the bar so now we will have to change this code a little bit so that we can allow them to enter the bar so now what we can do is that we can use and as well as an or operator here okay so now what we can do is that we can say is adult and is with partner and then here we can say or are in black dress so what it means now is that now it means is adult true is with partner true and then on this or block we have this false part here okay and so now if I save if I reload you see it says enter the bar and enjoy so we have changed the meaning we have changed the meaning for which we are evaluating so now we are saying that if is adult which is true is with partner is true simply saying that or this is true then we can enter the bar so remember if you are using an or operator then what happens is that whatever variable you are using even if any one of them turns to true then you can enter the bar okay so here these two are true right and this is false but since these two are true we can enter the bar and now if i change this to or so which means that any three if turned to true then all of the statement is true if i save reload see enter the bar and enjoy okay and now if you want to change all of them into an or an an operator which means that all of them needs to be true then you'll have to use again this and operator okay so now you'll have to say and and so now all of them needs to be true then only this line of code will execute okay so doesn't matter how many uh, possible test cases you are checking for if you are using an and operator you can combine multiple variables at once to check for the values they hold but if you are using an operator all of them needs to be true doesn't matter how many for them you check okay so anyone is false 
then the entire statement will turn to false okay so now you will see this else block executed okay if i reload else block executed and now you can combine the values as well so what you can do is that remember talked about parenthesis uh, it has higher precedence okay so you can combine value so you can combine this value and this value together and so now this will be a separate here you can use an operator here you can use or operator it is going to be completely different than this one so first this one will be evaluated and then whatever value it holds will be evaluated to it so now if i say is with partner and are in black dress so this statement will evaluate to false why why false because one of them are false okay so is with partner is true but are in black dress is false so this entire expression will evaluate to false and then false and true will be evaluated which means that it is still false okay so this is is adult is true but this line executes to false this line this line compiles to false which means true and false will result to false which means that still we are going to see this else block executed part okay so yeah we can combine as well so again i re reloaded you see we see else block executed and now if i uh, try to combine this true then what happens let's combine these two so yeah is adult and is with partner yes true but now here we are just going to say or not and but or okay so now it will be something like uh, uh, true to true will print true because both of them are true which means that this code will execute this will evaluate to true and then true is true or false so this entire expression will evaluate to true and then true or false so if it is true or false just execute this code so now we will be able to enter the bar okay so now if i reload you see enter the bar and enjoy i know it might seems little confusing but here we are using higher order precedence we are simply saying that hey javascript evaluate this line first and then whatever output this line brings evaluate that output with whatever value this variable holds so when it will be evaluated this will print what it will print true and then true or false true or false will always print true which means that this entire line entire expression will evaluate to true resulting into this line being executed okay so this is what i wanted to i wanted to talk about and i almost forget it discussing javascript switch statement is an extension to if else statements so now let's see how it works and then we will compare it with if else and then you will decide which one is better so javascript switch statement is an alternative way of writing a complicated if else statement where all we want to do is to compare one value to multiple different options so we are going to take an example where we will have a weekday variable and for each day there is a different activity so basically we are going to map one activity to each day so i'm just going to say const day equals to and then here i'm just going to say monday and then first i will write the syntax for switch and then i will explain you how it works so we just write this switch keyword and then this parenthesis where we'll go the test cases and then this code block so here you simply check for day yes you literally pass the value for the day stored in a variable okay and so now here all you do is you say case and then you pass the value itself so you say case monday and then colon focus here this is not a semicolon this is a colon and now here goes whatever you want to do in case of monday okay so here i'm just going to say console dot log i'll say prepare uh, recording uh, yeah recording status and then console dot log 
uh, i'll say shoot videos okay i'll say prepare recording slides and then shoot videos and then after this we also write this break statement okay so what is happening here is that we say switch day so here we are actually so here we are actually checking if day is exactly equals to monday so we are literally checking for this day equal 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 this monday okay so strict equality checking is happening here so i'm just going to comment this one okay and then you can write another case so you can say case tuesday so what do you do on tuesday so this is just a fancy way of writing if else where we just write multiple cases to check for the output itself so uh, actually to check for the value itself okay so now you check in case of tuesday so day being monday prints this day being tuesday then do this so i'm just going to say console dot uh, log read mode okay and then uh, yeah we need this break statement as well and if we do not provide this break statement then what will happen i will show you in a moment and then i can say case uh, what wednesday wednesday and then if you do not want to provide any test cases for wednesday you can skip it and you can directly jump to write another case so i'm going to say case uh, thursday uh, i'll say console dot log prepare more slides okay and then again break and then i'll write case friday friday console dot log this time i do not prepare more slides but i actually go on to record and fix bugs okay and then again i can write break and now i'm going to write case for saturday and sunday so saturday and uh, sunday is complete holiday for me and so i can say uh, play and enjoy weekends we can so i actually go to play cricket on sunday on saturday i do not do much stuffs but on sunday i go out and uh, play cricket with my friends okay so now i say break here as well now if you do not uh, want to check for any of these cases then you can pass a default to it so you can say d fault and then uh, console dot log no day was passed okay okay and now in last one we do not need a break okay so now if i save uh, let's see we have passed this this monday okay so it is going to check if day is exactly equals to monday then you are doing this one okay so if i reload you see it says prepare recording slides from line 342 so from line 342 as well as shoot videos from line 343 so both of these statements are working now if i change this to uh, what friday let's check for friday day is friday actually go on to record and fix bugs so actually go on to record and fix bugs now let me show you what happens if you do not provide this break okay so i'm just going to comment this out and i'm going to comment this break out as well and then this one as well okay so all this three break has been commented okay and now let's shift back to monday you'll see that our code will be printed something like this so prepare recording slides shoot videos read more and then prepare more slides and then actually go on to record and fix bugs which means that all of these console.log statements will be printed okay so if i save reload hmm, did you see that i just told you and it happened so what break does is it says that if the day is monday and it matches the condition then you do simply these two steps okay so after this you are just going to break from the program so all the following code will not execute if 
these condition matches okay so that's why we use this break statement here or break keyword here to simply execute the program on time or actually to simply finish the program on time okay so that's why we use break imagine if we do not use break here then this entire program is actually a bug on monday we do only these two things which means prepare recording slides shoot videos but in the output we are getting this much of task which definitely we are not doing on monday so that's why we use break okay so we can finish the program properly and uh, let's fix it and now let me show you what if we do not pass any day uh, i'll say um, random day okay if i save we have no test cases to check if random day exists right so what we are going to do we are going to see this output which means that default is no day watch passed which means that all of these days has been written with the test cases but random day i could not find so program will simply say that no day watch passed if i reload you see it says no day watch passed okay and you can actually check for different thing as well uh, you can say uh, what const um, year of birth equals to 1990 okay and here you can pass year of birth and here you can check if 1990 then uh, what uh, yeah let's say prepare recording slides but no i'm going to say uh, you are a millennial act like one okay so if i reload uh yeah so const year of birth let's check it okay if i reload you are a millennial act like one okay so yeah different test cases can be done with this so this is just a fancy way of writing the same if else that we have written here okay okay so now we are back on our original example and so now i want to show you something more so remember how we used logical operator logical boolean operators for taking decisions based on multiple test cases as well as different test cases but did you notice something we did the same thing here but we did not used any logical operator so we wrote test cases for both wednesday and first day so it is same as saying that hey javascript if case is wednesday and if case is first day then just console that i prepare more slides on these two days so if you if uh, we were to do the same thing then uh, we would have to say something like this uh, if what uh, wednesday something like this so wednesday and thursday something like this okay but by using switch we just did this and uh, yeah if you did not noticed then that's why i took time to make you notice this okay now uh, i want you to take a simple challenge so a simple challenge that i want to give you is to convert this switch code into a possible if else code so it is not going to be really difficult for you it is uh, yeah it is it is really easy uh, just try and you will be able to do it and yeah for uh, doing this one for writing test cases for multiple uh, cases we'll have to use uh, what and operator yeah and operator okay so i hope you'll give it a go so pause it and try it and then i will see you with the solution okay so pause it now so uh, how was that were you able to do it so now let's see how to do this in if else which uh, by the way i believe that you're able to do it and you did it completely well okay so now if you want to convert this entire code base into a possible if else then i'm just going to write a uh, switch code in if else okay so now here you just have to say if day equals equals, equals equals monday then monday then do this so this one these two things okay and then uh, else if day equals 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 tuesday then do this and uh, i'm not going to write the entire thing i'm just going to give you a template and you can fix it okay if day is wednesday 
and the trust there is witness there and there is trust there then what we do on Wednesday and Thursday I prepare more slides so I prepare more slides else if day is Saturday well not Saturday uh, we did not check for Friday right so we are going to check for Friday what do we do on Friday I actually go on to record and fix bugs so I'm just gonna copy paste it and then we are going to say else if day equals 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 uh, what do you have it's Saturday and Sunday right then I'm just going to say console dot log yeah my holiday okay and else if we have no day then I will simply say console dot log no day was provided okay okay and uh, let's finish this one as well so I'll say on Tuesday uh, I do nothing okay so empty code block okay and uh, now if I reload hmm, no day was passed no day was provided so let's change the day to Sunday okay Sunday okay reload play and enjoy weekends but wait a second on line 381 it says no day was provided why day Sunday and what are we doing oh we did not check for Sunday we did not wrote the test cases for Sunday or did we so if day is Saturday and day is Sunday oh it cannot be possible so this is this should not be and here here should have been or okay not and because we are checking for either Saturday or Sunday Saturday and Sunday cannot be at the same time so it was a little bug in the code here I'm just going to write this or operator okay so if Saturday or Sunday yeah my holiday now if I reload hmm, it says play and enjoy weekends on 360 so this one for this code here so console.log play and enjoy weekends and then for yeah my holiday is from line 379 so this is a fancy way of writing if else now I'm going to ask you simple question which one do you think is better well I'm not going to answer you because both switch and if else has its own use cases which we are going to discuss later when we will talk about the good steps in JavaScript or uh, how to be more mature in JavaScript while writing code okay uh, so yeah this was switch statement next up we are going to talk about what is this general difference between statement and expressions you might have heard me talking about expressions and statements again and again so now we are going to understand what actually it means now that when we are getting comfortable with JavaScript it's time to learn more theoretical concepts and now I quickly want to talk about difference between statements and expressions. This is gonna be a high level overview so that future lecture makes more sense. So essentially expression is just a piece of code that produces a value on its own. So for example if you write 30 plus 40 this produces a value on its own so if you copy it and if you paste it in the console here hit enter you see that it produces a value straight away similarly someone's year of birth so uh, 2004 this is also an expression it also produces a value on its own so if you write it here 2004 hit enter you see we got the output Another example can be what? A combination of uh, Boolean logical operators? Yes, why not? So you can say true and false and not true. So this expression also evaluates to a value. So if you copy and paste, it would probably evaluate to false. So yes. It says false why because this is just an expression and an expression evaluates 
to a value on the other hand we have statements so a statement is like a bigger piece of code that is executed and that does not produces a value on itself this is just like normal spoken language so if you write something like this you can say if 10 is greater than 5 then say something so you can say console.log 10 is greater than 5 okay so it will not produce a value on its own but it will produce value only based on this condition so if 10 is greater than 5 which is true so this block will evaluate to true and hence it will produce you this value so statements are readable you can read it okay you can tell them to apply their own logic but expressions produces a value so this part here so this 10 is greater than 5 this is expression okay and this entire line is an statement or a statement okay so if i summarize then expressions can be assigned to a variable as operands while statements can only be declared so yes we can assign this entire expression to a variable so i can say const uh, output equals to this one okay and then if i say console dot log output you will see that the output will be false if i save reload you see output is false from script.js line 397 so 397 consoled us false why because this part is now an operand as a form of expression this evaluates to false and then false got stored in this output variable and then when we consoled it we saw that down here in the console and similarly we also got 10 is greater than 5 output as well but this is statement statement are the whole structure while expressions are the building blocks so for example a line or a block of code is a statement okay so i hope i made it pretty clear and uh, actually i want to show you something so see this part here this is expression this is checking so if day is exactly equals to monday it will return true okay so expression evaluates to a value and this entire part is a statement and now next step we are going to talk about ternary operator so now let's understand ternary operator also known as conditional operator so a ternary operator can be used to replace an if else statement in certain situations so we have already talked about if else so make sure to understand it properly so again what is a ternary operator or it is also called as conditional operator so just like an expression evaluates to a value same way a ternary operator also produces a value so to understand this let's write an example program and then i will explain it step by step this way it will make much more sense to you okay and so i'm just going to comment the code that we wrote above about statements and expressions and so now here I'm just going to write a simple program I will say let's check if a student is passed or failed so I'm going to write a condition so if a student has scored more than 40 they will say he is passed else fail okay again I don't want any of my students to fail but just for the example we are going to consider if marks is below 40 they are fail okay they failed the exam not they are fail okay so I'm just going to say let uh, marks and uh, what what should we do let's create a prompt function okay so I'm just going to say prompt and you know pretty well what does prompt do okay and here I'm just going to ask the question enter okay good and now let's evaluate so uh, we can do it two ways so suppose if we want to write a program for this condition for this test case uh, we can use an if else so here I can say if marks is marks is greater than 40 then simply say console dot log pass else console dot log okay 
and uh, now let's evaluate it okay if I save reload enter your marks I'm gonna say 42 we see we get pass and uh, if I again do it reload and this time if I say 30 we see we get fail okay so this is normal way of writing if else so ternary operator helps us to enhance this code in certain situations so what we can do is that we can use ternary operator to write all of this on a simple line and then it will evaluate to a value and then that value will be stored in a variable so all we can do is that we can say we can create a new variable i will say let result equals to and now here we are going to write a simple ternary operator so a ternary operator has three parts that's why it is called as ternary operator so what happens is that here goes the expression that needs to be evaluated so here you are simply going to write this entire part so marks is greater than 40 okay and then here comes the if part so you just simply write and you can see that tab 9 is suggesting me that are you sure that you are going to write a ternary operator so i'm going to write it manually i'm not going to hit okay okay, okay here so i'm just going to write this question mark and then here goes the expression one so what is happening is that this is the expression that will evaluate and if it is true then this part will execute so this question mark it's simply saying that if this expression is true then do this so here you are going to say pass and then if this expression evaluates to false then execute this part so you write a colon and then you write the false part so you say fail so what is happening so this is the expression expression okay and uh, then this is the true part and this is the false part so if this expression evaluates to true then this pass will be printed and uh, if this expression evaluates to false then we will see fail okay so this is a simple ternary operator it has three parts so the first part the second part and the third part okay so now all you have to do is you have to build a sim simple string so i can say console.log uh, let's use a template string i would say you and dollar and here we are just going to assign this result variable so it will simply print you pass fail based on the number of marks the student has scored in the exam okay so this is same as writing if else but with slight variation okay and if i save reload let's test it i'll say this time i scored 78 come on yeah amazing score right hit enter say pass so from script.js 409 we get this output pass and the same ternary operator also printed the same output based on the same condition you pass okay so this is ternary operator an enhancement to the if else part of course we don't forget if else just because we know ternary operator ternary operator cannot be used everywhere it can be used when you simply want to produce a value based on a certain condition okay it's not like that if you know ternary operator then you can altogether skip if else and from now onwards whenever you will be needing if else you are going to write ternary operator no it is really depended on the kind of program that you want to write and the kind of output that you want to expect based on on some certain situations okay so yeah make sure that to remember that ternary operator is obviously a good choice to use over if else but uh, don't replace it with if else if else is equally important ternary operator is an enhancement but it cannot be altogether the replacement for if else okay next up we are going to talk about javascript's different versions from the beginning so uh, what are these ECMA standards and all okay and then after that we are going to become what <laughs> almost 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 a pro in javascript congratulations on completing the complete fundamentals of the javascript programming language as i had promised you earlier in the intro to javascript video that at the end of this section 
we will be talking about javascript releases and versions so now let's take a detailed look about javascript release cycles and their current status and i will also give you some general details about javascript programming language and i promise you i won't take too much time and we will be shortly back to coding so i will give you five major points to remember with some additional information so let's get started by taking a little insight into the history of the language so javascript was created by brandon eek in 1995 for netscape navigator which was a famous browser back then netscape and eek designed javascript as a scripting language for use with the company's flagship web browser netscape navigator now the complete nitty gritty details does not matter but still if you are deeply interested to know about the history of javascript and its organization netscape's fierce war with microsoft you can see a link on the screen you will find it in the description as well you can read more about it but again that much detail is completely optional while we are sure we don't need to dig deep into the history of the language we must know the creator of the language we are using so yes this information about javascript is very important for you to remember is that javascript was created by brandon eek in 1995 for netscape navigator javascript was initially known as mocha and then renamed to livescript netscape finally changed the name to javascript so they could position it as a companion for the java language a product of their partner sun microsystems so javascript was named after java to attract java developers but it has nothing to do with java so always remember java and javascript are two different programming languages with two different use cases okay so moving forward you must always remember this important fact about javascript is that it was just developed in 10 days so a famous saying goes like this do you need more motivation to stay productive brandon e created javascript in just 10 days and you have 21 days so it is said that if you do something continue for 21 days it becomes your habit and with my personal experience i can say this is somewhat true moving on let's continue the history so in 1996 Microsoft launched Internet Explorer and copied JavaScript from Netscape and released its version of it and called it JScript. So to solve this issue, the Netscape team decided to standardize the language. So the language was submitted to an independent organization called ECMA and in 1997 with a need to standardize the language ECMA script 1 also called as ES1 was released so it was the first official standard for javascript fast forward to 2009 after a lot of internal disturbances between teams whether the language should be headed ES5 was released with lots of amazing features but it was not done after another 6 years finally in 2015 the much awaited version of ES6 was launched in June 2015 this was the single biggest update that contained all of the modern features such as introduction to the let and the const keyword arrow functions template literals default parameters callback promises async await and other lots of amazing features that we will be learning in great details just after a moment from now now they release annually because they prefer to add a small number of features to the language each year instead of shipping a huge update in a single year as it happened with ES6 so it will be much easier for everyone to keep up to date so according to this new annual release cycle in 2016 ES2016 or ES7 was released in 2017 ES2017 or ES8 was released and the release cycle then continued another thing to keep in mind is javascript is a backwards compatible language which means the code which was written way back in 1999 or in the es1 version is still valid in the latest browser 
So something if it was developed in 1999 by writing the ES1 version of the code that would still run in the modern Roger. So it was accepted that nothing from the language will be taken out but will only be added because they did not want it to break the internet by disallowing older programs. So you can imagine if we disallow the older programs that were written in ES1 version to not function in the modern Roger it would cause a chaos. Now just the opposite of this is forward compatible language which means the code that you write in modern javascript will most likely break if you were to execute it in older versions of javascript. So if you write the modern program and if you try to execute it in older javascript engine it would probably crash and so to deal with this problem we mainly parse our code. So we use babel and do polyfilling that converts our code to an older version of the program and to run smoothly. And so I hope this distinction between forwards and backwards is clear to you. Ok so now we are well equipped with all the fundamental knowledge about the javascript language. Let's talk about some core level topics from the next video such as functions, arrays, objects, loops, document object modeling, scope, scope chain, hoisting, this keyword, uh, asynchronous javascript again i talked about callback promises async await i just mentioned that these are some important concepts that were updated in es6 features so yeah we are going to look into all of this so yeah let's get ahead and uh, understand this in more details so if you like this do make sure to like the video and comment your feedback on it i'm gonna see you in the next one till then stay safe happy coding